and welcome to the Overwatch Pacific Championship. It's a pleasure to have you all here this evening. I am Dallas Easy Fight City. Joining me here, Kevin Ever Walker and Matt Smite Ross. It's week five, day number one, and tonight we've got two wonderful matches up for you. We have Detonator Gold coming up against Thailand's Hope of Team Fireball. Then after that, it's going to be the undefeated Blank Esports taking on AHQ Esports Club. So can't wait for these ones, guys. Honestly, this first matchup, Detonator Gold against Fireball. If there's ever a time for Detonator to get another win on the board, or in fact, more wins on the board for Japan as a whole, this is the team to do it against. There's a big fan following for Fireball. They've had some promise, but all of that promise has only been against these Japanese teams so far. Fireball need to beat a Detonator Gold today, and they need to do it convincingly to give us any hope of them moving up the ladder. And it's going to be Fireball on screen right here as well. And just like you said, Smite, Fireball still in the pretty rough spot. Not as rough as Team Detonated Gold. But uh, all the teams in the sort of bottom four, it's almost been splitting off now. Hong Kong Attitude and Machi have separated themselves from the rest of the teams. So and now you've got Fireball, Detonator and Sister kind of chilling out in that bottom three spot. And for all of these guys, it's, it's, it's extremely important for them to, to grab wins where they can. Something interesting about Fireball is realistically, the majority of their wins have come from okay. the Japanese teams. They haven't really won against anybody else bar much. Well, I mean, one thing to sort of really notice though there is how much, I guess, these um, teams down the bottom of the rung are improving, you know, throughout these weeks here. Fireball probably obviously showing the most promise, you know, compared to some of these other teams down the bottom there. I mean, Fireball looking like they really need to set the tone this evening, as you mentioned as well. So this is definitely a must win for Fireball, but obviously Detonator will be able to get their, uh, maybe some, some momentum coming if they do manage to get themselves a win here. Yeah, a little bit of the sportsmanship going up on stage as well. Teams just got get a little bit of a handshake going on there. But um, I would like to, I would, regardless of who wins tonight, I really want to be able to see Detonator in particular really step it up because it's not even about winning would be really great for them. But for them, I want to see them be able to take maps quite comfortably off eyeball regardless of who actually wins. Detonator need to be able to actually show they have the ability to be quite dominant against a team like Fireball because if they're not getting past Fireball, there's no way they get past Machi, there's no way they get past Hong Kong Attitude, which are the next two teams lining up right after Fireball. And then if they can't take the win tonight, it's even questionable if they can even beat Sun Sister, the only team they've actually beaten so far in the tournament, the other Japanese team. Yeah. Now, also, Sun Sister have at least shown promise ever since they've subbed in XQQ. They've actually shown hope, potential of actually beating some of these teams while it's not been the greatest Results Which, by the wise. way, I got a bit of trivia regarding XQQ, Let's and I, I, I believe, if my sources are correct, XQQ only got himself into Taiwan on the week he showed up against Flashwall. So, really, he was meant to be on the starting lineup, but he wasn't physically in the country to play in the OPC. He was still in Japan or wherever else he was. As soon as they got him in, immediately subbed him in, immediately their results started to change. Now, that's maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's not entirely accurate, however. Their prom like what they were able to show, like their, their actual team ability to win started to really improve, and that's something quite ex that's quite exciting for Sun Sister. That again, I don't know if we've seen that from Detonator, they just said, haven't seen that spark of hope. Amakin's still been looking good, but one guy on his team so far isn't going to be able to carry his whole team. I think Sun Sister might kind of kind of struggle in that same regard as well. They're both relying on one, maybe two guys to really push the whole weight of the team. And if we're going to talk about one, maybe two guys on each team, right, we've got to start talking about Fireball and Apudo as well. That's going to be the star matchup of yeah. this one, right? You've got Apudo, you've got Amakin, both have a lot of promise and even a lot of fan following from both of these teams, right? So you've really got to watch the matchup between these two guys, both of them like their McCree. In fact, some of them, uh, Amakin does actually favor Farah where uh, Abudo will shift towards Genji, and while Amakin shows that sometimes he might be willing to play that as well, Abudo just shows, I've got to say, a better hero pool right now. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just have a quick look here at the standings. So obviously, Blank Esports just leading quite convincingly their 9-0. and zero. Tonight might be the time where we do finally get to see them uh, have a little bit of a struggle coming up against AHQ Esports Club uh, in our second matchup of the day there. As we can see, they're 8-2. and two. And they have been improving very, very quickly uh, since the first week where they sort of lost the Flash Wolves, weren't looking so hot, and now they're looking extremely strong. Flash Wolves sitting down there on 6-3. and three and closely followed now by Hong Kong Attitude on 6 and 4. And then on that bottom sort of rung there, Marchi looking very strong on 5 and 5. And then the rest of these teams still have a little bit of work to go there. Fireball, Detonator, Go Detonator Gold and Sun Sister still struggling down behind. But taking a look at the lineups now, it's going to be Detonator Gold up first here. 
And I mean, one of the biggest strengths that they've got on their team now as well that's sort of come uh, out in the last couple of weeks that I've noticed has got to be Yoshiharu on that tank roll there. One of the strongest divas I feel in this entire tournament. Yeah, strongest Steve You're was big defensively, fan, right? I mean, I, I, I really like this guy, and I'll talk about him in a second because we've got Fireball on the screen right now, and also later on when we actually see the camera pan on the players, right? Always watch out for Apudo and one of his teammates. Like, who's the teammate that he's always doing something with? He's always doing something like cute with like, you know, well, let's his hands find Let's find out because yeah. I, I think we're about to get there. Yeah, I mean, just, just wait for it. It's always at the end. Have a guess. I don't know. I want to guess, but I also don't want to guess because it just, it, it could be anything at this sort of rate. Um, did Nader looking a little bit static Tomorrow, there on don't, their uh, intro? Don't disappoint us now. Yeah. Uh, nothing today. Yeah, well, nothing today. So, okay, so Incident R has been another play on Fireball that I've actually been really looking out for. He's been the guy, as much as we talk about Apudo, and we mentioned this earlier, but a lot of these teams so far have been relying on one or maybe two players to really put themselves forward. For me, that second guy on Fireball has been Incident and R. We're actually going to still be looking at Detonator for a second now. You were saying before you wanted to mention something about Yoshiharu in particular. So Yoshiharu, one of the strongest D.Va players, but specifically the defensive play that comes out from him. The way he's able to basically always ruin your day by just using... There he is. There's a Pudo. Isn't he adorable? No, oh, that's better. That's better. That's I was about better. to say, if he didn't do anything there, hey, yeah, if he hey. didn't do anything there, all hope was lost for them. This is when they right? to get the win, eh? They've got to keep morale up, right? But back to my point, right? On the other team, Yoshiharu, their main D.Va player, now, results-wise, he doesn't stack up to a lot of the other Divas in the tournament right now, but his performance, specifically defensively, he will eat your tactical visors. He will eat your Graviton Surges. I am literally calling it right now. I will eat my shoe if he does not, <laughs> if he does not eat a Graviton Surge in this series, I will eat my shoe. I suggest you cut the shoe up in small... It's easier to take in when you eat it in smaller pieces. I actually so. watched um, uh, a YouTuber lost yeah. a bet. He actually did eat a shoe on, on Was that a sock or a shoe? I think it was a sock. I did see someone eat a sock. It was G Bay. And you do, you do actually want to be able to grind that up to yeah. and just I was about to say there's a microwave here. We can chuck it in there, soften it up a little oh, yeah. bit first. You, you, know? you add some mushrooms, Put it on some defrost. herbs, some spices. Um, you know, make it a meal. Make it a meal. But it's not going to happen because Yoshiharu is going to eat Probably more than one Graviton Surge in this series, I've well, got to say. You've heard it here, He's Stream. Not, you've heard it here first, Yoshiharu Stream. Yoshiharu <laughs> ain't a picky eater. He'll, whatever ult you got, he'll take it. I mean, he's, he's probably going to eat my shoe with his defensive methods. <laughs> let's, get, let's get real. So here's um, something I want to bring up about Team Fireball, though. It's something I've already mentioned in, in, in previous weeks, but where they're sitting right now, they've moved Rocket onto Winston. Haven't really seen Fireball play Reinhardt since. They've, they've jumped, they've put Zelfix on Reinhardt a couple of times, but realistically, they're playing Winston-only compositions now. They're playing essentially dive compositions only now with the Winston. That is something that has been working for Fireball, but also something I think is ultimately going to let them down. Now, in this particular matchup, Detonators still have, I feel, a far more flexible lineup that can play a variety of different roles and compositions. And Team Fireball, it surprised you the first time you saw it. Maybe it shocked you a bit. Now you're into week five. I think you know exactly what you're going to go up against. If you're a team detonator, you've done your research, you know what Fireball is going to run against you. You should have that as an advantage in, in, in sort of your hands to play with. It, it's something that, you know, quote unquote, the better teams have been using against uh, Team Fireball. Now, I don't think it's going to be an issue on control, and we just saw that it's going to be Lee Jung Tower, to no one's surprise, the most commonly picked map for the first round. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a big effect on, on control and even Lee Jung Tower. Winston, he fits in perfectly. He's at home in Lee Jung Tower, I've got to say. Yeah, except even on, except even on Control con Center. Even, yeah, but yeah, Control Center is going to be the swing sort of stage for, for Lee Jung. Every single Control map has a swing stage, and this one's going to be Control Center, where you, teams are going to switch things up a little bit. Well, they're they, I don't want to say they're expected to, but usually they do. So Control Center is where you're going to start seeing the Reinhardts come out. Control Center is where, you, where you're going to start seeing the slower death ball, McCree soldier type of play, hiding behind shields, slow pushing out your opponents, and just out damaging them in general. So, I don't think Fireball are gonna be able to do that unless they decide to run Zelfix on Reinhardt again. But at this stage, without considering what they've done in scrims, only looking at the matches, they haven't been they haven't been putting Zelfix on Ryan. And you, you gotta you gotta assume there's a good reason for that. So they're gonna stick to the Winston composition for everything they do, not just in control, but I'm I'm gonna say probably just everything tonight. I mean, we've seen it before. I uh, I believe it was Blank that actually drafted against them. It was on hybrid. They picked 
Hollywood. And I talked about this during the series itself, and it's because there's options. I mean, sure, yeah, dive works great on attack, right? You go in, you take the first point, but there's a great composition, very shield-based, doesn't run Winston on defense. Now, Blank was able to run that on defense because, hey, surprise, they're comfortable running something that's not Winston. Fireball, though, were kind of locked into that, and while it can work, they didn't have the option. They didn't have the option of playing a shield-based composition on that defensive point, and it really worked terribly for them when they had to run Winston. They just got, I mean, yeah, part of it was because they were playing against Blank, but also, composition-wise, it just did not work out for them. Well, coming into this next one, I think one of the core things to note here, and this is not just for Detonated Gold, it's the Japanese teams as a whole, I feel that when they come into control, they start off map number one really hot. They look really good on the map, on the first map. And sometimes they do manage to pick up one of the first couple. <coughs> but after that, you know, they sort of seem to fizzle out. So I think it's very important that Detonator do pick up this Li Zhang Tower coming up against Firewall. Because if they don't pick this one up, I think it's going to be very hard for them to get um, back into this series. They seem to not really have that, I guess, that tenacity, that mindset to really allow them to, you know, play, you know, throughout the series and really try to take it to Firewall later on. I know that if Firewall do manage to drop it, though, that is where they are somewhat strong they have a lot more experienced players i feel uh in i guess the high level competitive scene to be able to sort of bounce back but i think for detonator this is a must win map for them yeah this is another that's another weakness that i point out for detonator in the past is obviously the failure to close out games even if they get the lead even if they get a comeback they either don't complete the lead or they don't complete the comeback and that's cost them a lot of games so this is again a team that has the ability to actually get ahead a team that i have no doubt actually has the ability to win games because if you can get a lead on another team, that means you can actually do something, you, you're actually good enough to be able to get the lead in the first place, which by theory kind of says you should be able to get a win. Now, that last half, that last 50%, that's where Detonator Gold haven't been able to do anything about. Yeah, I mean, quite often and mostly on these control maps, right, <coughs> Detonator is able to come back from fights, which surely, by all accounts, they should be losing. They're behind in ultimates, but somehow they just go in and they actually counter out all of the resources that the enemy team has. And Yoshihara. usually, yeah, Yoshihara is a big part of that. And they come back, they take the point. But like Avril said, they're hard. They, they find it hard to actually close out with their advantage, right? They come in, they stabilize, but it doesn't matter if you have more ultimates if you don't execute them properly. So they're great at coming back from fights that they should be losing but when it comes to when they should be winning, they just don't do it consistently enough. I think they've been most consistently winning early and then losing later, rather than coming back. They haven't, for me anyway, they haven't really... If they lose early, I don't usually expect them to come back. They have a couple of times, and that's been great to see, but a lot of other teams that have also done that have also managed to take wins where, they, where well, I guess, where they shouldn't have, but, you know, realistically, they should also, because if you do make a comeback, you're on a bit of a momentum roll yourself. And Control in general is a very momentum-based map. This is why you can see a, a 99 to zero flip the entire other way. Well, we're gonna be getting right into things here. The action is already underway. Curl off picking up that early kill here. And uh, Yoshiharu down. And that is the big problem now for uh, Detonated Gold. You know, one of these big, strong tank players, they have to really protect that little back line they've got going off. It's gonna be Dodloff on that Zenyatta, and that's a very important uh, character to be keeping alive right now. Detonator being able to answer back very quickly right now, being able to get themselves the first cap of the point, it looks like. And as a reminder as well, De La v, the previous DPS is now onto the Lucio Sosahate, the new hit scan DPS. This has been a pretty good change for Detonator so far. They're gonna run a, a sort of half dive, a motion dive composition, but then with the soldier to sort of back up. And so far, Yoshiharu already being punished. This is the early lead I'm talking about with Detonator. Can they actually extend this now? So, I mean, triple DPS here actually coming up for the side of Detonator, trying something a little bit different. Fireball getting themselves a bit of cap time. They're almost managing to make their way over there with losing Rocket into this fight now. They are going to be uh, without the big Winston up in the front line. Again. Samurai D trying to get himself around the on the side here, but Yoshiharu not being used to not being on a uh, tank hero here. Now the DPS on the side of Detonator are dropping. MZ now has this Pulse Bomb to work with. Also, will be able to pick off Dottle up around the side here, it looks like, as well. Great positioning coming out now from MZ now to really open this fight up for Fireball. And indeed, they find so much here. Apudo coming in with the Dragon Blade as well, picking up a couple there, and they get themselves the cat back. And realistically, Apudo shouldn't have been able to get a Dragon Blade before Amakin. Amakin was so much further ahead to start with. Then there is a hole. We're so much further ahead to start with. They still have that lead. They should still be able to come back with an alternate advantage here. Dragon Blade and a Transcendence. 
this has to be a fight win for Detonator. If they can get this fight win, they can extend their progress lead, deny Fireball from getting from catching up in terms of progress lead. Well, it's going to be important to see if Yoshiaru can set himself up on that high ground in the back lines there and really unleash onto the side of Fireball, but with those two ultimates on the supports they have to work with. But Kurlos goes down very early into this one, so this is going to be the opening that Detonator are looking for. The Transcendence now being used as they well. They don't even have the ult anymore. And then this should be it for them, being able to do it without all these ultimates, but indeed they drop the Dragon Blade as well, trying to take out a Tracer in the back lines. A little bit of an overcommitment here, coming in from Amakin, but it should just be just enough for Detonator to get themselves control of the point back. Uh, these are the small things where Detonator will lose their lead. The Dragon Blade that absolutely could have kept, there was only about two members of the life of Fireball, one respawner, which was Kurlos, and realistically Amakin didn't get a lot done with the Dragon Blade anyway. So small things like this is how Detonator start to lose the lead. Now they are on 60%, 40% left to go, they got about two more fight wins required to get this across. Well, Transcend is now coming in for the side of Fireball. Saihate did use the Pulse Bomb very early on into that fight and didn't manage to find a pick, so they do not have the man advantage here. But Sound Barrier now coming in for the side of Detonator as well, going to be able to keep them alive through this exchange here. They will be dropping the players on Fireball extremely low. Zelfix almost ta getting taken out, and indeed he falls down as well. The rest of Fireball should be able, uh, should be dropping now as well on the back of this here. As Saihate now being able to get around the backside here, throwing no, out another good. Pulse Bomb to, for nothing right there. Again, a little bit of an overcommitment coming in for the side of Detonator. Still haven't managed to get themselves the cap yet, but obviously all of the side of Fireball are wiped out. This will be the recap now for Detonator. So Detonator managed to get the respawns and reinforcements back in time. Detonator, this is not a clean game for them at all. They, they are still throwing away a lot of pulse. I don't know if you, if anyone sort of caught that, but Yoshihado off screen actually used the, the tag visor as well. He had that available, used it, didn't see any kills with it come up with the, the kill feed. Maybe he did a bit of damage, but realistically, I think it did not. Well, Dragonblade coming in from Apuro now as well. Let's see what he can find with this one. But Amakin already taking down the mech on ninth, so they won't have that uh, barrier to work with to keep him alive. And now Amakin answering back as well. So Hati doing a lot of work up in the back lines there as well. That's managing to find so many kills as well. They don't even get to keep this one into overtime, didn't they? To picking themselves up the first map there. And that was a big comeback after after the big commit for Bible, so there was a fight where Detonator, where it was where Saihate missed the Pulse Bomb, Yoshiharu a few seconds before they also used Attack Visor like I said, two ultimates out for Detonator, picked up absolutely nothing, but what they did get was they got the reinforcements with the respawns of Lockwick and Survival, they did commit a lot more ults and they failed to get even more kills, so both teams really realistically whiffed ults on both sides, and that's got to be Fireball's mistake because with the amount of ults that they actually committed there, it should have been a fight win, and they couldn't clean up members. And Detonator came back; they didn't have to use anything. They just completely outfrag Fireball, and it was a really unexpected kind of turnaround. It's not something you look at on paper and say, "This is the expected result." The expected result was that Fireball should have won that fight. Fireball never recovered from that fight; and they lost. Well, this is something we've talked about as well. So Detonator picking up the first map there. Obviously, let's see if they can close out map number two here. It's going to be very important for them as we talked about the momentum they need, and they do have that trouble closing out these maps. Here. I've already loaded. And, and they are the picking place. them up. Is this the change they needed? This triple DPS uh, on the side of Detonator, pushing them over the edge there, finding themselves the man advantage right now. They do manage to find the trade kill on the side of Fireball, but it will not be enough, actually, as Fireball should have to fall back off this fight here, and first cap should be going in the way of Detonator, unless Fireball can come in with the speed of the flash right now and get themselves onto the point, but indeed, it's not so. And you expect the rocket to actually pressure Yoshihara. One of the great things that Fireball did earlier on, on Night Market, was they annihilated Yoshihara twice in quick succession. They didn't do that this time. Around. And you can see the kind of effect he actually has when he's left alone. Didn't they have control now? Got a couple of ultimates coming online. Fireball. I'm still waiting for NZNR to show me something on the turn. Well, it's interesting that they're not running with that uh, pharmacy combo there as well. Going to be opting just to have uh, the Ana and the Lucio there. Just a good work here from Apudo, but he gets, right pay, he gets paid for right there. Amakin all over him with the dash. Now he's got the Dragon Blade up to work with as well. This next fight sh should be easily going in the way of Detonator as Fireball have nothing to work with. NZNR just suiciding himself off the map here. These Fireball players need to fall back right here. Oh, but they are just going to be caught out in the white room and get taken down here as well by Detonator. And Detonator holding onto the point very convincingly. I think Fireball really need a Puro's Genji here. They need a Puro's Genji in, and they kind of need a Tracer from Inter Denar. If they had that, they could actually deal with Yoshihara properly. Now they're just going to play Soldier versus Soldier. Uh, it's kind of 50 50. Not much ultimates here to work with on the side of Fireball, but look at everything in the bank there for the side of Detonator. Not letting Fireball get across the bridge just here as well. Let's see if they're going to take the fight to him. Pulse Bomb coming in there from Apudo finds absolutely nothing here. Dragon Blade now from Amakin, finding that first foot kill onto Kurlos. One support down on the side of Fireball. Make that a wow. second, make that a third, and a fourth there from Samurai D. Make that Yoshihari with the tactical, just wiping everything out here. And Detonator looking very convincing in the lead.
Well, it's a big fight for Detonator for Ultimates use, maybe a little bit. I, I, the reason I'm not too happy with that is because we're only on 80%. Five all got a chance here. They actually have an opportunity to swing this back around. They got a little bit, just a little bit left to use more than Detonator, and Detonator got to stay alive with just a sound barrier, and then they should be able to close it out. I'm, like, I'm surprised Five all haven't done a full committee again. But here they go finally. Well, Boogie Knight's coming in right now, sound barrier being used, but Yoshiharu picking himself up a double there. Detonator already coming out on top of this fight. A primal raging Winston just helping Yoshiharu get himself back over to the point there as well. Thanks for shooting me back into my team there, friend. And now it's just going to be Winston falling down while he's left alive, left alone here on the point. See you later, Rocket. And Detonator, 99% overtime ticking down and that's going to be all she wrote as Detonator picked themselves up the second map leading 2-0. to zero. And that was 100-0 as well so it looked pretty comfortable for Detonator. This is the most comfortable I've seen Detonator ever. They didn't look this comfortable against Sun Sister. That was a close game. They didn't look, against, they didn't look this comfortable against Fireball the last time as well. And that was a game that Fireball won. That was a match that Fireball won. One thing I want to point out again, Yoshiharu uncontested for the entire, for the entire Garden's kind of period didn't really see rocket commit onto him didn't really see their team the team's dive functionally pressuring the back line of detonator goal which is why i kind of want to see a pudo back on the genji if you put a pudo in the genji put incident on the tracer that's a lot more of an effective combo i think for fireball well to my knowledge here i think this is the first time we've seen um uh, Detonator come out with the triple DPS lineup here, so I think this is working out extremely well for them. And Fireball just haven't really been able to react to this just yet. Uh, Ninth go going to be switching over to the Zarya now, so I think this is very strong for the side of Fireball. We've seen the strength of that uh, Zarya pick on Ninth right there, so it's six. Well, Fireball have changed the composition that I said would work for them, so let's see what happens with that. Well, Ninth dropping very low already into this one, but Donlock going to be the first one to fall there as NZR gets himself around on the back lines there. Now the rest of the side of Detonator looking very uh, frisky right now as well, so how they find himself that kill onto NZR, not even worried as he uh, is still very, very low there. Samurai D going to be able to leap across to the south back. No, he's not. Apudo is going to find him with the slash, picking himself up Yoshi. And now without that soldier on the point, it's going to be Amakin forced back as well. All of the players now from Dead Net are going to need to pull back off this first fight. And Fireball picking themselves up the first cap uh, quite convincingly. Fireball finally, this is the this is the composition, like I said, that's going to work for them. They have now shields from Ninth that are going to be able to support their dive. They have three competent divers where players are playing the correct heroes as well. I don't expect Yoshihara to really stay alive here any longer. And the best part is Rocket's able to pressure Amakin as well, which was a pretty big problem for Fireball on the Garden. So. Yeah, and Dodolok gets yeah. taken down again extremely early into the fight. Apudo all over him like a on jam on a sandwich indeed. And now NZNR trying to get himself up in the back lines and find himself uh, a kill onto Amakin. But now Detonator somehow answering this, managing to pick themselves up a triple right there. Having that player advantage as Saihate pushes off the rest of these Fireball players now. It's just going to be Rocket left on the point alone by himself. He's taken out and Detonator recap. Now we're going to see if Detonator can do the swing back. Something I've already said, something Smite's already said, Detonator will have, have had moments where they do actually come back into the game. I haven't seen that as much out of Detonator, but I think it's a real possibility. They have a couple of ultimates here to use that I do expect them to be able to commit. They're not super far behind. And I expect Fireball to also be able to commit here. So both teams, the winner of this next fight, is going to be well ahead. Well, he did not his Pulse Bomb into the Abyss right there and found absolutely nothing with it. So the little bit that Fireball did have to work with, not coming out too, too much of Veil there. Going to be the Sound Barrier being used as well from Zelfix and still nothing being used. So this could be Fireball's... Uh, Crux right here, it seems, as they commit a lot of ultimates to this fight. Detonator not actually having to use anything at all and managed to clean up the side of Firewall. This is that's the second or third, maybe even fourth time we've seen Detonator be able to do that. It's kind of reminding me of when Blank played just about anybody. They just win fights without even having to use ultimates. It's like, hey, we can just aim really well. Let's just do that. It's working for Detonator. And like I said, they're, they're a decent amount of kid goodies for Fireballs. They committed only two ultimates, so they've still got a decent amount to work with here as well. But uh, progress has won the other favor. Well, it's going to have to be the biggest graviton of our ninth life right now. They don't have a uh, diva to eat it, but look at this! Double lock up and throwing that Discord orb out, and Saihate just going to work as well, just taking them out in the back lines again. Fireball going to be pushed back very... <laughs> I just don't even know what to say right now. Detonator just absolutely turning up here with such a strong swing back as well, and not even, only committing two ultimates in that fight. The Fireball again, they, they went into a fight where they didn't really throw anything out there. They lost members pretty early, so arguably good choice. I'm going to say it was a good choice because they can come back to this fight much stronger than Detonator are going to be prepared for. 
The other time I said that though it was on gardens and unfortunately Fireball didn't quite have no effect, it was on Night Market. Oh, there's Let's the see if Fireball can actually swing it back to the amount of But that's a big transcendence bad. coming in. Let's see if it can keep them alive through it. It doesn't look like it as a Pudo hits that Dragon Blade as well through the middle of that Graviton Surge. Has the Nano Boost to work with as well, but Saihate keeping things alive for the side of Detonator. Dodoloff being extremely elusive. Finally they managed to take him down here. And now with just a couple of these DPS players alive, can they manage to do it? It looks like they should be able to force a Pudo off the point there as well. Detonator keep themselves in control and they pick up map number one. What is going on, Abril? I think Fireball kind of falling off. Uh, both teams, Detonator have picked up. I will, I'm gonna give Detonator, um, I'm gonna give, Den I'm gonna throw Detonator a really large bone here because they did they did really pick things up and they specifically, Amakin, the Amakin side hub, they combo has been working out really well for Yoshiharu was a little bit hit and miss for me, but when Fireball didn't challenge Yoshiharu, yeah, he went off because there was no way he was not gonna as a soldier that was not gonna get pressured. So really, I think Fireball just gave that one away. It was good play from Detonator, but realistically worse play from Fireball with overall bigger mistakes. And the craziest thing out of that entire series was Detonator's ability to win fights where they were realistically behind. And I don't know, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of blank esports in there because they're the only other team that have been able to come out and just say, doesn't matter what the ultimate economy looks like, we are just gonna outfrag you. But coming off that, it's very interesting to sort of note there, we still see that same execution problem. I mean, Fireball seem to usually not have that issue. Maybe it's a bit more of a cohesion problem that we've seen with the side of Fireball. But with the side of Detonator, you know, they have these ultimates to work with and they usually don't get much out of them. And it's the same thing in this matchup here as well. You know, they had a lot of ultimates to work with. We saw it on map number one, extremely, I guess, you know, we saw it all the time. They were throwing out so many ultimates to these fights. They weren't even getting any kills with the ultimates. They were getting kills without the ultimates. You know, that Dragon Blade coming out, finding nothing, Pulse Bomb being thrown just into nothingness as well. And Detonator still coming out on top of these fights. So I think if they manage to actually get the execution of the ultimates out, they are a top tier team. So I, want, I, I, I want to say in regards to that, yeah, so both teams actually, being a little bit behind the mark on when they actually use their ultimates, getting value out of them. Detonator were the team that actually punished Fireball for when that happened, and in fact, played around that. Just looking back at the last map, Control Center, you've got Fireball coming in with four ultimates. The big one being that Graviton Surge, and if you actually looked at where Detonator were all standing, they were all over the place. So, so much so that only, what, two people were caught into that Graviton Surge and there was already a Winston barrier on it. You had Transcendence ready to block it out. This is Detonator recognizing the win condition for Fireball. It's like, hey, we haven't seen a Graviton all game. That's got to be coming out soon. Hey, Yoshihari, can you... Oh, hang on. You're you not playing, dude. It. You're not yeah, playing, dude. I was going to say, right. I was going to say is... Um, there may be a possibility that Yoshihara doesn't eat ults tonight because he's yeah. not even going to play. Okay, look, that doesn't count, all right? That doesn't count. What do you mean it doesn't count? I think it no, totally not, counts. Don't, don't make me eat a shoe on stream, please. Let us know on the stream. Does it count or doesn't it count? Is Smite eating a shoe? So, yes, he is. Please, I, I need these shoes. <laughs> <They're my laughs> That's what shoes. I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not worried about eating it. It's the fact that I'm just not going to have other shoes. So. Yeah, that, that would not um, be fun. That would not be fun. Come on. Sorry, Come on, I get... For Fireball as well, I think the highlight of where the big discrepancy between two teams is that four ultimate fight for Fireball, where they didn't they didn't actually use the ultimates. There was, in fact, there was there was one where they didn't use, and then there was the one afterwards where they did use, and they did kind of come out on top when they used it. But you're right about the transcendence. They were they ended up committing into transcendence anyway. What was crazy is. The fight they should have been able to commit on was the fight before that where they wiped with four ultimates still in the bag. I kind of feel like they gave that one away a little bit too quickly. Detonator Gold were able to get the early pickoffs and Fireball just kind of said we're not just gonna we're not gonna commit to this anymore. And I I, I kind of still feel 50-50 about that. I wanna say maybe it was a good idea because then they came back with the ults anyway, but also timing wise, that should have been the fight where ideally they didn't get picked off early on and they didn't come out with the ults because so, it was going to be the fight they were expected to win. It, it would have been great to go in, but with those early pickoffs, it's great that, I, in my opinion, that Fireball went in and they got picked off, but also they recognized that, hey, look, Detonator used two ults in that fight, two big impactful ults, Sound Barrier and Tactical Visor, right? That's that's a value trade for them. They didn't use any ults, they got out of it without giving away too much yeah. ultimate charge as well, and they still had time that's to, fine. to go in for another fight. And that's fine. But the problem is they shouldn't have lost a member to start with at the beginning anyway because that was what affected their ability to actually engage. Be and they should have been able to engage whether the sound barrier and tech visor was there or not. They would have, on paper, won that fight based on a pretty strong ultimate advantage. 
Didn't it have just been out fragging? I, I, I got to say that's been the key thing. Is like, it the triple DPS? They're though? able to. It's. I mean, it isn't. It isn't the triple DPS, but I think it's the fact that their triple DPS includes the soldier in the back line, and they're playing in a situation where they already have control of the point. Fireball have to attack into detonator, where Yoshiharu get, get. already has found a place he can sit down on. He's not easily accessible anymore. Fireball have to be able to get into a sort of fight where everything's a bit more messy. Uh, things are a bit more spread out and they have easy access to actually be able to dive on Yoshihara. Where, the, where Fireball really came out ahead was on Night Markers when they shut, out, shut down Yoshihara twice in, a row, twice in a row really quickly. When they did that, everything was fine. I think Fireball have had a bit of a struggle to actually execute their dive properly. And it looked even worse when they ran Incident onto Farah and they ran Apuda onto the, onto the Tracer. When they swapped around, it looked a bit better. That's what I was sort of going to say, is Fireball's target acquisition throughout, I guess, the entire series there, you know, they kind of had a little bit of a case of the detonators. You know, they started off really strong, and then it just seems that, like, on um, map number three there, they just were com all over Dodloff at the start, and they were looking really quite strong there. And then once they sort of started trying to get onto Yoshi, I think that was maybe their downfall. Not going for the Zenyatta there really, I think, started letting them down. When they started just punishing the Zenyatta, Easy, easy pickings for the rest of them. But I guess that sort of falls back onto Saihate there and Amakin as well. I think they were doing such a good job on the Genji and the Tracer. So the second they push in, you know, these two guys are already flanking them. And even if it's not both of them, it's just one of them. And this being able to sort of, I guess, spread the lines of fireball apart. They're not, allow they're not allowing them to dive, I guess, as one cohesive unit onto one of these players. And I guess the communications on the side of fireball just must have been all over the place. I think we need to really look out for where Rocket's going. That's a big part of their dive is the initial Winston jump. Genji shouldn't be going in first, Tracer shouldn't even be going in first. Where Rocket actually leads with the jump, that sets the stage for where the damage is going to be coming up from the DPSs as well. If he's not the one targeting Yoshiharu, it makes it that much harder for both the Pudo and Incident Art to do that job anyway, uh, to do that job instead. So the three of them together need to be able to coordinate that quite well. The thing about a dive comp, specifically the types that Fireball have been running every single every single match, and I'm going to say every single match in the future unless they change something, is that and pros have said this as well, is that it's very, very all in, very risky, right? You don't execute it well enough, and suddenly you put yourself in a terrible position. You're talking about three guys diving in. If they don't do it properly, that's three of half their team are now out of position. They're now very easily shut down and killed. And I think that's exactly what we saw very often on each three of those Li Jung Tower maps was Fireball going in, they mess up their dive, and it gets punished by Detonator. They say, look, there's the biggest hitbox in the game, Winston right here, let's get 500 hit points of ultimate charge, and then, oh look, there's two flankers running around, we don't need a Roadhog, we don't need a McCree, they're out of position, they don't have their Winston with the big barrier to protect them, we'll just shut them down, outfrag them, and that's that's why it looked that way, that's why it looks like Detonator are just outfragging them, looking like blank, the difference is they're doing it against a team that is constantly diving on top of them. When that messes up, it's very easy to punish that. Well, we'll see if Fireball can turn something around here, they have just picked King's Row, our, the classic King's Row, no less, the map we, I guess, we see multiple times every single weekend. I mean, there's not obviously not much to choose from, but it usually always comes in here at uh, number two. Fireball definitely going to need to, I guess, work something out. Dive, you know, is what we see coming in from the attack side here. I think the side of Detonator, because this is something they've sort of struggled on, I feel, when it comes to these, you know, preset sort of, you know, uh, hybrid maps and, you know, assault maps. This is where they kind of struggle, I feel. Now that they have this option, you know, to run triple DPS, and you, we've seen Yoshiharu on the Soldier, and I think he's actually quite good. He's actually, if you saw every time he managed to come up on first person camera there, He's got a very high, he's not actually missing at all. I mean, you'd expect that in a tournament like this. But I think there's a lot, he just doesn't miss. I feel like there's a lot of flexibility now coming up for the side of Detonator coming into this King's Row, and I think they're looking really strong here. So Detonator on King's Row, uh, they're, they're the home team. So they picked the first map, and uh, obviously Fireball have picked King's Row. Now Detonator, last time they played on this map, they ran the Sombra on attack. And it was very close to working. And it didn't look like it because their first team fight was terrible. They got completely shut down, uh, everyone got murdered straight away and just handed over a whole lot of ultimate charge. But the difference is it could have been completely different because I can't remember who it was, it might have been Zonder I think, uh, there was a soldier up in the high ground, up in the window shooting down and he was actually hit by the EMP that you're meant to leverage as a Sombra composition on attack. He actually got hit by that, that's, that's pretty big right, sure he can still left click but he was still hit by it. Now, if Yoshiharu was up there contesting him just a second earlier, 
then he would have been shut down. That soldier would have been a bit more of a non-issue because he actually got a lot of shots on the team as they were coming in. He in fact killed the Sombra itself. Now that's not a huge deal after EMP has actually been used, but it's still another body down. So if Yoshihara was up there a second earlier, I think that team fight would have gone completely differently because they also shut down the Reinhardt by hooking him straight after the EMP went out. That could have gone completely differently. So if Detonator do run this composition again, then I think there's so much potential for it to be a very one-sided team fight if they just execute it, if they just nail that execution. I mean, that's I guess that's sort of the way it goes down when you pick that Sombra. I personally am going to be, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they go with it, but I'd really like to see them run that uh, triple DPS again, just because we saw it obviously work with such strength there on uh, Li Zhang Tower, but indeed it is going to be yeah, the Sombra. No, I'm not a fan of the setup plays. The setup plays have, have very little, if any, momentum, snowball potential, and the, the most success the teams have found has been off the snowball potential. So, can Detonator actually sit up here? Uh, we'll, we'll find out. Well, Fireball, you know, playing uh, very uh, defensively up in the uh, in the back lines there. So just waiting for Detonator to bring the fight to them. Amakin already on 75% here. So moments away from seeing if he can set up a very big EMP, get this uh, fight, uh, get this party started, it seems. I think Fireball actually giving away too much positioning here. They need to play a little bit more aggressively onto the health packs to kind of deny Detonator from leveraging them. Here comes a counter dive. EMP comes in here. How many players can they take down extremely quickly? They find NZNR and, and Zalfix as well. Apudo though answering back here. De La Vida right up in the back lines. He needs to get this kill onto Kurlos. It needs to be found right now, but Kurlos doing a great job at making De La V waste a lot of time as a lot of his uh, teammates are falling down in the back lines, but Apudo can't do it all on his own there as Detonator finally cleaning up this fight and managing to take the first cap very very easily indeed and let's see if they can snowball off the back of this one they should probably switch off that sombra though yeah they won't be able to because if you play a sombra composition your entire game plan is based on setups and you, you can only win off setups now fireball gave that one away again a fireball so far tonight have they know what detonator are doing you have enough time to figure out what their plan is and i think fireball just played that a bit complacently now they know the Sombra is in play. Well, they, they knew the Sombra was in play. They had the opportunity to deny the health pack. They had the opportunity to play their counter dive. They are going to go in now. This is going to be interesting. Well, Pluto going to need to maybe do a massive Dragon Blade here, but not when the Helix Rocket finds him. And now, De La Vie's up in the front lines here, doing a lot of damage now. No one really punch. blocking him out. Takes Rocket down there. Detonator just finding kills left, right, and center. Very, very easily. Now, De La Vie just pushing all the way up through the streets. Sai Hate going around the left side there, getting himself a very good position. All the ultimates as well on the side of Detonator to work with. If we can push out NZNR up in the high ground, and indeed, Sai Hate finds him. Fireball just falling over right now. This is turning into a real disaster for Fireball. Detonator didn't have a snowball momentum to work with. Now they do because Fireball kind of just gave them a bunch of kills. Gotcha. Fireball didn't get any trades whatsoever. Here's going to be the EMP one more time. A good EMP gets oh, absolutely huge. secure for his team. Apudo up in the back lines. Can't even help them. He gets hit by that EMP as well. Can't even hit the Dragon Blade. Ends it now so far back. Has that tactical visor. He's going to have to get this away. But can't do anything with it as the rest of his team are nowhere to be found. Zalfix dropping down now as well. And Detonator just rolling through this King's Row. And now Fireball should be able to get aggressive. I don't know, Amakin's still staying on the Sombra. Maybe he's going to, it doesn't look like he's going to change. So for Fireball, you've now had two checkpoints to understand what the enemy team's trying to do. I don't think there's any more excuses for Fireball. They have to be able to come in really strong. Six ultimates. This is a. This is it. They. They. There's no way they don't win. This. Well, sure. Super hacking skills there on Apudo, not even letting him get up on the high ground with the dragon blade. And oh my goodness, they, they find him. What is going on here? A wild Yoshiharu just finds himself that kill oh. onto Apudo up in the front lines. Rocket down as well. Where are all the fireball players right now? Are they even in this match? They've got all the ultimates to work with, and this is going to be do or die for them right now. Ends it now with well, the oh, nano boost. There start. we go. That's a double kill on one rocket. That's what they need to find right now. They should be able to push out the rest of these detonator players and. And finally, they managed to stabilize a small piece of defense here. Let's see if they can hold this one down before point three. I really like that cute Matrix play right at the end that just kept Donald off alive just long enough to get back to his own team. But Bible, that was pretty... Wow, I, was, I, was, I wasn't too sure what the result was going to be there because they kept getting picked off right at the start. When they finally did it, and they got in with the fight, they started to do quite well. Here comes another EMP. 
Apudo finally getting the Dragon Blade off. Sound Barrier coming in for the side of Fireball, but Apudo up in the front lines has no support. Gets taken down out of this one. Only finds one kill with the Dragon Blade. So now a lot of pressure needs to be put onto NZ Nah, and it is indeed going to be Samurai D all over him. And still letting him just go to work here up in the back lines. Ninth managing to find the mech of Yoshihara as well. So this should be a fight that Fireball can take out now as they do have a little bit of an advantage here. But Dinator right up in the right up in their faces here, and they are paying the price on this final push. Fireball managing to stabilize yet again. I think Dinator are going to find pretty quickly that they're not going to be able to success. Look, Fireball even just checking randomly for summer. This almost feels like when you're playing TF2 and there's a spy, and you're just team checking everyone. You're like, are you the spy? Are you the spy? I'm not too sure. <laughs> Great game that one. But now, I mean, this should be when Amakin switches off after, you know, that little suicide, but it looks like they still want to work around, um, you know, that EMP, see if so they So check can... this. Rocket's actually playing Reinhardt. So it's saying, we haven't seen a Reinhardt play out of Fireball for a long time. And if we did, I assumed it was going to be Zelfix. It's actually going to be Rocket. I don't know how, how, he, how he's going to do all this. Obviously, Fireball practiced something in their scrim time, but uh, this is kind of untested, at least for me. Samurai D taking uh, Reinhardt to Reinhardt there, switching up to the Reinhardt side of Detonator as well, so has uh, Yoshiharu here as well. We've seen uh, some self-destructs to be used to uh, great effect, especially on this uh, third point and here. EMP's up. And he gets right up in the back lines. No one manages to catch him out there. Sound Barrier now coming in for the side of Fireball, so this could be what they needed. Dead. But self-destruct finding its mark there. So Hate going to be hitting the tech visor. Does get taken down by NZ and R over on the side. But Detonator finding all these kills on the point. Nanoboost coming in. Can they manage to find the kill here onto NZ and R? Yes, they can. Cart moving extremely quickly here. Uh, 3.7 meters left to go. Detonator have the taste of victory in oh, their man. mouths. Fireball looking frantic to get themselves back on it. It's going to be a sly Lucio. Lucio. It's going to be Zelf. It's trying to keep it alive. Can anyone contest it? It's looking like this one's going to be coming up. All oh, detonated gold. And indeed, they managed to get all three points there. Minute 58 left in the bank. I bet you uh, you skipped the heartbeat there when you said the cart was moving fast. Yeah, and I was like, just, oh, it stopped. And it just it, stopped. it was literally just standing there like, yo, oh, well, that's... Uh, I was like, oh, it's going fast. No, and it's oh, not. Better, it's better, not. Better slap a ticket on that it's one. Not. I, it's a classic. Did you, yeah. catch, did you catch the speedo on that one, <laughs> How fast was that one moving, officer? Uh, that's a good, uh, that's a good, that's a good uh, two miles per hour. Gonna have to, uh, gonna have to send you to the station there, uh, mate. It's it's long weekend, you know. They're pretty, they're pretty tough on, uh, pretty tough on those. <laughs> Not actually long weekend. Uh, but <laughs> fireball. So, wow, fireball, 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 fireball. Losing to. Losing, I, I, I want to give, I want to, if I, I give them the benefit of the doubt, I'll say, okay, you lost to Sombra on the first checkpoint. Yeah. Happens, happens. Happens, like I said it was time. going to. Yep. Happens, <laughs> all the time. Hey, 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 hey. But, second checkpoint, third checkpoint, come on, Bible, please. <laughs> three Didn't times, fool me once, fool me twice, but. Fool me three times. Fool me what's three the, times, you, fool me three a, times, you just can't. Think about the one. composition <laughs> that they swapped up to as well when they're on the third check one. They went to hunker That wasn't down. even the problem. I mean, no, it wasn't the problem, but it's also punished pretty heavily by EMP, right? So, you've got a Reinhardt. Who's a Poodle needs, needs, needs to wake up. up. So let me talk to you about the correct, it's it's a play style issue. This is this is the correct line of play up against the Sombra. So A, on to start with, you see the Sombra, you need to be the one, your team needs to be the team to get the initiation. Your team has to be the team to start these fights and get the early, not only the early picks, but get the early positioning as well. You want to play hunker down, you want to bunker down in the back of your base, you're going to get a full team EMP'd. And this is this is the thing about Fireball is you know there's a Sombra on the other team. Cool. Don't wait until the EMP comes into play because Detonator want to choose when to play the fight, and they want to choose when to play the fight when the when the EMP is in play. So if you're Fireball, you need to choose to play the fight when the EMP is not in play. That's going to be your best chance of winning. They don't really do that. Well, that was something I was going to sort of talk about there. Is uh, looks like Detonator really forced Fireball into playing their own game there, and now let's see if uh, Fireball can force Detonator into playing their Detonator, game. With the Widowmaker fine? pick. This getting is, this is awkward. It's like where's the team? <laughs> Well, I mean, Detonator, again, taking a page out of uh, Fireball's book there, you know, sitting all the way at the back, and then they pounce on them with force right now, all the way uh, up into the front lines. Then ninth going to have no support, going to be getting taken out there as well. So Fireball finding themselves a couple, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to do anything off the back of this unless they find Yoshiharu here. Oh, but okay. the Helix that's Rocket, rocket. Whoo, that's going to be all Detonator needs to stabilize this piece of defense. Everyone, heal up. Oh. Good place, particularly My from Donalove, who I feel was, was the key player in pressuring out Ninth. That was just kind of annoying. Ninth wants to take shots off to just about everywhere else, and he's like, where, where am I taking this damage Why from? are there balls in my face? How am I, how am I dying here? What's going on? If 
Spy Ball got, unfortunately, with the Widowmaker, they got the early pick. And, oh! oh well, now, now he's took out, he took out the problem player for him. Oh, man, if he managed to get that one good. as well, I was about to say, this is going to be a highlight reel here. Pudo managing to find himself another one, but it's going to be Amakin answering with the sword. Finds a second kill there as well, so this might be all Dinetta need again just to hold this defense down. He's going to be getting chased down by a Pudo. Don't Who is the better that? ninja right Why now? Why would you deflect <laughs> that? You can't deflect a Dragon Blade, Amakin. Oh Surely my you goodness. understand you can't deflect the Dragon Blade. I mean, maybe it's a little bit of that panic play there, but Apudo going to be picking up Saihate. This should now be Fireball's point to take here. Dodloff falling down again as well. Now Apudo's woken up. He's gotten out of bed this match, and now he's managing to find all these kills up in the back lines here. Fireball should be able to grab themselves a cap off this, and we'll have a little bit of snowball momentum to work with. I mean, looking at the ultimates there, but still have that Widowmaker. I gotta, I can describe that moment of Amakin deflecting Apudo's Dragon Blade as the same moment when you said the cart was moving really fast. It was just instant regret. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you, did, you saw it all over my face, didn't you? Oh, no, what have I done? It's 3.69. Instant, instant regret. <laughs> <laughs> but now NZ and R managing to push all the way up here into the back lines. A little Lucio boot there just to push off these flankers. Oh, and that's going to be Yoshiharu making NZ and R pay now. Saving rockets just for him. I got one with your name on it. I got three with your name on it. It's a triple. <laughs> he's he's, he's learned, obviously, now. He's just like, I can save the rockets there for when, uh, when we get pushed. And then down ninth, being up in the high ground there as well. Amakin finding a couple of headshots onto him. We're really got to watch out now for Amakin. See what he can find uh, on the Genji here. If he can manage to get the Dragon Blade up very quickly. This will be what they're looking for. But they do have that attack wise to work with Sound Barrier now coming through, keeping everyone alive through this one. It's going to be a Pudo trying to chase that himself down again, again, and again he finds it while the rest of his team clean up okay. these detonator players here. Transcendence being used Un as well. Unnecessary Transcendence, but that could have been a, could have been a slightly cleaner fight for a Fireball. What I liked was Alphix's Sound Barrier. That kept Knight alive, and after committing so much onto Knight, where realistically you're the entire. The entire dive by your tank, by your Winston, was purely on ninth, which means you didn't open up any plays onto any other plays for your own DPSs to really go on. And to have that completely denied by one sound barrier, you, you saw how legit that the Anakin and Saihate after that were like, I don't know what to do now. They started to run away and Pluto punishes. Well, Detonator taking the fight straight to Fireball and they take ninth down as well. So this is exactly what they need, taking out these two squishies here as Kurlos falls down in the back line as well. Amakin going to have the Dragon Blade up. Hopefully he doesn't commit it to this fight. Detonator should be able to clean this, out, this one up without anything else being committed to it. And indeed, great fight there from Detonator to stabilize. And I think this is a little bit better than what we saw coming out uh, from the side of Fireball on point number two defense. Yeah, Fireball went in with so much in the previous fight. I, you can see how big that transcendence would have been. Wow. What, what is he doing? What is he doing? He's, what? He's going to do this. No. He's actually going to do this. Way. Pay attention, <laughs> Dinner. <Dignity. laughs> this is hilarious. No way. Unbelievable. Emmerkin's up in the front lines with the sword out thinking, oh, look at me go, boys. Look at my triple kill. Oh, wait, wait why have we just lost the point there? And now Emmerkin, he's very angry indeed, trying to make NZ and R pay, but NZ and R does not care at all. He just says, thank you for the cap, mate. I'll go back to spawn. No worries, buddy. And now Detonator looking shaken up after that one, Avril. I was going to say Fireball, uh, they want to have to take another couple of fights, wait for maybe a couple of ultimates, get some early picks, just the usual story. It's going to be a Pluto coming in again, denies any chance of transcendence. Uh, it should be Fireball making a pretty decent push on through, but they need to save They need to save a few ults to actually make the final push here. Using too much earlier on in the third checkpoint usually means you're going to give the other team an ability, the ability to actually stabilize. Well, a little bit of tunnel vision coming out from Detonator, and now things are not working out well for them at all. Fireball quickly cleaning up that it's fight. It's a good stall from Saihate, though. I, actually, I quite enjoyed that. Did you? Because it, it now means that Fireball, for all they committed in that last fight, they got no objective off that, so they actually you have to always be able to translate a team fight into some sort of objective. And a Fireball not being able to do that kind of completely nullifies the team fight. Now we're going to see another engage from Fireball where they do actually commit again. This is a big one. They've committed a lot to this. Well, passing into the Iris, it's going to be still Fireball. no objective. They're not getting pushed. And, I mean, great stuff here. Now Fireball cleaning up the kills here, though. This is exactly what they were looking for. And this is going to be them making a lot of movement on the cart as it moves very quickly now towards the final checkpoint. <laughs> And it is indeed. There's not much contest coming out now, but as Detonator do finally contest, it's going to be the Transcendent straight out here, but the Self-Destruct doing great work there, and it's just going to be Fireball pushing that one over the edge with just a little bit more time in the bank than Detonator. It, gotta, was, it was moving very quickly. you got to think, if Incident and I didn't get the back cap, 
what would have really happened there because I, I don't expect Fireball to have gotten a quick of a time as they did without that. Um, I think it was a really sneaky play from Inzanar that really paid off for them, but it's it's, it's really detonated not paying attention, I think. It's not, it's not something that you'll say like, oh, they did this well with this result, so it's going to translate into the next match. It's just, it's something that came out, it's a very unique situation. It's, Teams should be aware of it, of Seriously, course. Seriously, it's but... not like it. It's not like an XPK moment where he went for the back door and just outplayed everyone there and just got the cap right. Inzan and I. It's not like Amakin went back to challenge him. Amakin got owned in a one v one, and Inzan and I gets the hero cap. That just wasn't the case. It was like Dinada fell asleep for a bit, and then they realized when it was too late. But I mean, they were sort of like you know the the con must have been you know we're going to take the fight straight to them. We saw the dragon blade come out there, and you know he's going, look at me boys, look at me, look at me with my dragon blade out. Killed three, pretty good, eh? Wait, why have we lost the point? Surprisingly enough, this is actually the second time that that's actually happened in this tournament. And who did the, it the first time? It was uh, someone from Sun Sister. All oh, right. Yeah, okay. So funnily enough, this is a Japanese trick right now. <laughs> this is something that these guys have clearly been sharing between each other. They're like, hey, if you're actually losing you mean? the checkpoint, uh, just go sneak behind enemy lines with a tracer. But, but you Fireball mean, did it. When you say it's a Japanese thing, you mean like a Thai Japanese thing, because it was Fireball that did it, right? Was it Fireball? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. That's Speaking of falling asleep, so Detonate <laughs> asleep, Smite's asleep. <laughs> Easy, you're awake, I'm awake. Let's get into this. Sign back. <laughs> I was like, what are, what are we going on of going here? And indeed, what is going on here? As Detonator just taking this fight super quickly indeed, finding themselves their kills onto Fireball as they get extremely aggressive into this one. And I mean, the hack not even needed here. Yeah, well, they didn't even need... This is the another thing. They don't even need the Sombra for this. Uh, the Sombra would be... I can see the argument for Sombra here being that if you want to actually go for the setup play and your goal is just to cap the first point, fantastic. But actually, they have the opportunity to get a lot more than that. And with or without the Sombra, they get an EMP anyway. They should be chasing kills as they are. Well, good. Didn't they? they're going full Usain Bolt right now, just charging just down hold. the street space. Don't, don't even need here. to use anything do here, just left clicking their way to victory, it seems. What is actually happening here? Fireball, I mean, a little bit of luck on their offense there. And then on the defense, they are just made of paper right now. They're just Day getting blown away. I think De La Vie really opened up as well here. He got the first initial couple of kills. Obviously a hack in there. With I don't know if Emma can actually got it because it didn't see, but if he got it, it's fantastic. If not, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's, it's a case of we're back on the Lee Jung Tower, Fireball come in, and Detonator just win because they frag better. So far, that's just been the case. But they're gonna, Fireball now going to play into another EMP. If they do what I said last time, which is they need to pick the fight and they need to initiate first before EMP comes into play, they have a chance. Oh, EMP comes in through there as well. Tactical Visor as well coming out for the side of Detonator. Puro looking to try and keep it's this one trade, alive. Actually. Gets double, and that's a lot better than what he's usually been finding with these Dragon Blades. But the rest of his team are just dropping like flies now as De La V looking very frisky indeed up in, these, in this uh, King's Row attack. I'm expecting a second cap here, just because Dinner are also now still so far ahead in cap. Oh, sorry, so far ahead in ultimate. Um, and they've used so that they've made such good use of this time here. If if Amakin can get into the EMP, they might actually be able to cap out all the way to third as well. Be interesting to see here. Uh, the, the dive now comes in for the side of Fireball. Pulse Bomb being used there to no avail as well. And Kurlos already taken down to this one. But De La V's Pulse Bomb going to be finding some kills there. So we have that Self Destruct to work with as well. And a Primal Rage on the Samurai D as well. Self Destruct coming in. Doesn't wow, find Puro, anything. He dodged that one, but he doesn't dodge that double off. But it doesn't matter at all as they manage to pick themselves up the second cap there. And I mean, Fireball looking very shaken up here indeed after this. Do have a Transcendence coming into this next fight. And a little bit of a sound barrier. Maybe the Primal Rage to work with as as well, but I mean, the problem for Fireball is they have no damage output, they're relying on pure player damage output, and we've already seen what happens. Dan have just been doing that better. Amakin's nearly onto EMP already, and if he gets that, I'm expecting a full. I cap. mean, I don't know, I don't know about Knight's position here, he's just right out in the open here, not even trying to use any of the higher ground here, just getting completely. He doesn't pissed. have time, it doesn't matter no though, time. it doesn't matter though. Fireball finding the kills that they needed to, and now Apudo hitting another blade here. This is going to be what right. Fireball were looking for. They should be able to hold this one over time, is out of here, and Detonator. What an attack that was there. Fireball have a little bit of more time to work with. Let's see how they go on their offense. And all it came down to was that initial push out, securing all the kills. No, no, even, no defense at all for the first cap. Uh, get the cap again without any real hassle. Get the card out, chase the remaining kills. Fireball come in for a team fight. They lose because they had already hit on ults. Didn't have to cap the second point. Now Fireball finally coming in at the end, securing the kills. I said they didn't have the, they didn't have the damage initially, 
but getting a couple of the ults in the middle of that fight while Detonator was still waiting, that was good timing for Fireball. So Fireball, a team that really needed to take the initiative a lot in these fights, finally did it in, but I think they did it a little bit too late. And for, De for Fireball to come back now and to try and cap as far as Detonator did, it's a tall order. I think someone's lit, lit a fire just underneath the side of Detonator tonight here. They're just looking like a completely different team, I feel, from what we've seen in previous weeks. And I mean, coming up against Fireball, I would have almost written them off entirely coming up against Fireball, just at the rate at which they've been improving here. But I mean, in, in all honesty, it looks like Fireball have absolutely no chance. I mean, not much else to say. I mean, that, in that attack, uh, Detonator, they just killed the other dudes a lot better. Very simple. Great. Great analysis there, yeah. Smite. You're you not win even, by you're getting not even, more kills. You're not even wrong though because not, not a huge amount of you're not even wrong though because where Fireball should be making trades, then they are just outright winning. So Fireball got a lot of work to do, not a lot of time, and they lose members at the start again. And it's such an important member as well. It's going to be NZNR getting taken down extremely early into this one. And now the rest of the Fireball side just being withheld just slightly here at the gate now. Can't really push through. NZNR going to be making his way back now to the... Uh, to the squad, so let's see if they can push their way in here. Do really like the position that Knight's trying to get uh, hold of right now, as Apudo is actually going to be leading uh, the charge up into the high ground. We'll leave it alone here, but look at that positioning coming out from Detonator, just baiting the fight out now from Fireball. We've seen them do this here on their first defense, let's see if it works out for them again. Yep, hashtag squad goals, let's see if Fireball are actually going to be able to make this push in through. I'm losing members early on, they've already used up, what is that? Pretty much 30 seconds without getting too much leeway so far. They are now able to pick up a decent number of kills, but I think the trades coming up from Dead and Mike will slow them down. It is indeed. Amakin being a uh, thorn in their side here, just being extremely annoying on the point, managing to uh, stagger this one out ever so slightly. Will not be able to escape with his life here, and this will be fireball managing to get the first cap here. Minute left. It's going to be contested. Clock. There will be a contest. Oh my goodness, they managed to make their way back in in the nick of time. Detonator not wanting to give this one up too easily, but the player advantage definitely in the way of fireball. I think they're just going to be feeding them kills here, and indeed they are. Still just buying themselves that precious time though, and I mean, that's what it's all about. So that's a, this is a 50 50 play for Detonator because on one hand you deny a little bit of time which is incredibly important going into time bank on the other hand you're right they fed ults to fireball so fireball what they got to do with that is they have to be able to use advantage and really really spread out and ration their ults to say we need to use a dragon blade here to get past the first corner or the second corner we need a pulse bomb here and we need a transcendence if we're going to lose this fight we're going to we need a transcendence to be able to live through and actually be able to cap the second checkpoint they got a long way to go still i expect getting out to get aggressive well so hard manages to open that one up and didn't even have to use the pulse bomb here amakin still holding on to the blade as well transcendence though coming in uh, from kurlos there managing to keep fireball alive through that one as they pick themselves up from kills let's see if it's going to be that hero play from amakin up in the window doesn't look like he's going to be foolish enough to jump into this one i.e his death and fireball going to be able to make themselves a little bit more ground here but they've got a lot to go and they're already in that overtime oh there's there's actually detonator members somewhat far ahead that can get picked up if they're not careful and fireball looking for as big of a snowball as they can actually get detonator now losing two fights means they fit a decent amount of also difference between them and hello whoa pitcher and pitcher and pitcher and pitcher and pitcher yeah, I, I tripped out and seeing a seeing a dent well, Amakin's not tripping out right now as he goes straight in with the Dragon Blade, but Kurlos manages to find him there. The Pulse Bomb from Sahara like trip back to base. did open up uh, ninth up in the back lines there. Yoshiharu going to be losing the mech as well. So, Detonator slowly uh, falling off this uh, fight here. But look at this, Samurai D manages to push uh, Zalfix all the way back now. So, uh, That's Fireball... He needs to play on the card. He yeah, Fireball without their support. And this is going to be extremely bad for them here. NZ Nash shouldn't be able to stagger this one for too much longer as all the players from Detonator are all over him right now. He will be able to escape. Will he be able to re-engage even? And now Fireball looking extremely good to push their way through this one. But where are the rest of the team members here? They need to get in and help NZ and R. Saihate falling down there as well. Rocket, what a godsend. And there they are. And they do manage to get this cart moving. Will they be able to get it further than Detonator though? With the Pudo's Dragon Blade, that's going to tell the entire story whether they win or not. One ultimate is basically going to decide Fireball's future here. And so far, Pluto has been looking good. And Detonator, they, they can't wait for the cart to get to the second corner before they actually take a fight. Detonator kind of got to go now. They Where is Samurai any, D? They got no time to wait. They got to just go. Well, Samurai D on the super flank here, getting up into the back lines very simply. With Pluto's already got there. two. Oh my goodness, and that's the damage as well. It's going to be Amakin falling down but they do manage to have a little bit left in the tank, but it's not enough. They're running on yep. E right now. Yep. Detonator are wiped, and this is going to be Fireball doing it with Grace, pushing this one over. 
and picking themselves up the cap. Wow. I don't even know what happened there. They they seriously just woke up. Grace Grace might be a little bit too no, that too, that last, last too generous. I, I would say it was Graceful. I would say it was a little bit more difficult than that. I I, I think <laughs> what I liked about what Detonator did was they they had a real purpose in mind, which was we're gonna deny time as the main Damn. purpose of this defense. The main purpose of this defense is we'll force the overtime, make fireball. Put Fireball in a situation where they have to play 100% on the card and where they will, if they lose one fight, that's going to be it. They did that, then they went for the big commit. It was roughly around here. This was, I think that fight that we just saw in the, in the play of the game was the big fight for Detonator to be able to come back. But look, Apudo is, I, I, what? he's sleeping. Like, he's actually sleeping. Like, I, 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 oh, he's woken up now. He's woken up now. We are back. <gasps> Instant regret. <laughs> Instant regret from Easy twice in one match. No, every, every, <laughs> everyone saw it. Surely you all okay. saw it. No, Surely I'll give you that one. But, but this is the thing, is Detonator had the right goal in mind, which was, and, and that came out right at the start. They didn't need to re-engage the first cat. They did just to buy time. Now, I, I think they didn't buy enough time. They brought maybe like five seconds, six, seven seconds at the cost of maybe three members. Not a good trade in my opinion, but Again, their goal was to was to just deny time. The they did is, that, but they didn't win the fight that they would. They chose the fight that they wanted to win. The fight that they chose to fully engage on with ultimates and everything was the fight right out of the second cap, right out of the second cap, and they didn't win that. It's a double-edged sword in that defense on that first point. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, yes, they're buying what 20, 30 seconds. No, no they bought like seven <laughs> seconds. Yeah, that Se was seven minimal, seconds, right? Minimal. Yeah, I'm, okay. I, I'm, I'm a little bit generous. But they should have brought. They should have bought 20 seconds. They, sh they right? should have bought more. But even if they did, right? Think about it from Fireball's point of view. What do they need to do to win? They need to get it past the second checkpoint. They need to get it up to that corner where we just saw them make it to. But to get it there, they're going to be in overtime anyway. They, I mean, yes, you can take. One of those fights where, yeah, oh no, Fireball, they can't lose one of the one more fight a little bit earlier on. That would have really, realistically, been just one earlier fight during Streets phase. What actually ended up happening was Detonator set up Fireball to be in the position where you said, okay, we're going to be nice and liberal with our odds. We're only going to throw out one here, one there, and have enough to continue on to make sure we never lose another fight again. It set them up in that position by diving onto the point and just throwing away ultimate charge. Remember, that wasn't just a Tracer and a Genji going on there. There was a Winston in there. I think it was ulting at one point as well. That's a lot of hit points of ultimate charge being thrown over to the enemy side. Fireball used all of that to stay in the position where they weren't going to lose one more fight. Well, if you are just joining us, we are in our first match of the night, Detonator Gold. Uh, they are taking on Team Fireball, and it's currently one and one. Detonator Gold look extremely strong on the first Lee Jang Tower, picking that one up. And now it looks like uh, Fireball have suddenly uh, woken up here, and they've managed to pick this one up here themselves. So very interesting series here. I'm expecting this one to actually go the distance now, it seems. They're looking quite uh, well matched up, it seems. You know, mistakes coming in from both of these teams here. But it looks like Fireball, you know, as this progresses, I'm leaning a little bit more along uh, along the side of Fireball now. It looks like they just have a little bit more tenacity, I feel, in the tank there. You know, they really can sort of bounce back when their back's against the wall, and I think we just saw that on King's Row. I mean, third map, it's going to be the home team's choice, Dead and Edda Gold. They're going to be picking up, they're going to be choosing the next Assault map. And Assault has been pretty surprising in a lot of the results so far in the tournament so far. It's where some of the upsets have actually happened. In fact, it's some of the only map types that Blank have actually lost uh, to another team on. I mean, yeah, they're undefeated right now, but in some of the series, Assault has been one of those swing maps. So I'm expecting some surprises coming out, but we've, oh. got, to, we've got to remember, right? Fireball are a team that very, very often can only run that Winston composition. At the very last moments of desperation on King's Road, yeah, okay, they swapped onto Reinhardt. It still didn't really work out for them. So I think Detonator, if between the two teams, Detonator have the best shot at the initial first fights. The no alt fights, the altless fights, you can say, Detonator have looked stronger on all accounts. And even in fights where Fireball have alts, Detonator, again, they can come in, they can just win without any alts being used whatsoever. Um, if either team on Assault is going to be able to snowball from Cap 1 to Cap 2 and actually just take it out in one go, which should be quite rare, but we've actually seen a decent amount of it already. Detonator should be that team, unless they're playing Unless they're playing for setups, in which case they're, wait, they're doing a lot of waiting, wait for the EMP, do all of this. 
that means the the opportunity snowballs a lot less. However, I've got to say for Fireball, they do a lot of waiting themselves. When they the biggest mistake for them was, hey, there's a somber on the other team. Let's chill out until they get the EMP. Oh wow, how did we get EMP? Now we lose. As we stack up together as well, no less. Do they have a somber? Let's just chill out in the back here. Together. <laughs> together. Not even, let's chill out apart, let's chill out yeah. together. Start a little campfire up. It's like literally Lady Volskaya from the cinematic, like, oh cool, I'm safe in my bunker room from, from the hero that has invisibility. Like, oh, surely she's not in here. <laughs> surely, surely I'm fine and then all her guards die. I mean, maybe, like, so let's hope, no, right, I'm, I'm hopeful for Fireball, you know. It was one of my sort of favorite players coming into this tournament, obviously Apudo. It looks like he slowly started waking up throughout that, um, I keep using the term wake up, but I mean like he was actually asleep in the first control, I feel like. He was essentially no, he, non-existent. He was, no, 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 well, he, he, oh, he still got a decent amount of kills. It was only when he played Tracer and Inzanar was on the, the, the Pharah on, yeah. on Gardens, I believe. That's when Fireball, their DPS's, not what? a lot happened there. And that was because it was too late to change. You want you want Inzin and R to actually be tracer. on the Tracer. Yeah. Apuda's already taken up the Tracer. Now, you gotta swap two members. It's too it's too janky. You just wanna do it. You just don't wanna do that at the end of the day. Um, so Fireball kind of backed themselves into a bit of a corner and they lost the game kind of just compositionally through that. Now, every time Apuda's been on Genji tonight though, he's been going off on Control Center. He had good moments on Night Market as well. He had great moments on King's Row as we saw. That last Dragon Blade, total game winner. Got, the th got two kills with the blade. Found a third one on the way out as well. So, like I said, for Apudo anyway, this one individual player, yeah, he's been carrying weight for the entire night. But I thought NZ and R was the case. I mean, apart from the Pharah, I was going to say a lot of this I felt was NZ and R's when he was playing Tracer and obviously, you know, the swindle cap on King's Row. Yeah, well. I mean, that was one, that was a big okay. play, but that was... That was more like just him doing it versus, say, like, um, Apudo just really getting the guns out and just getting in the faces and actually getting those kills and dealing the damage. I think Incident has done a bit of that, but he hasn't come out as much as Apudo has tonight. So I don't think Apudo has been asleep at all. I think, if anybody, the, the other five members have been a bit asleep and Apudo has been the only awake one. Um, but uh, yeah, Apudo's been absolutely fine. It's, it's a lot of it's been the Amakin versus Apudo battle as well. It's great to actually see De La V back on Tracers because it kind of kind of missed his DPS a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I've got to agree. I mean, there's more room to see it as well because they're running triple DPS, which means no Yoshihara on D.Va, which means I'm losing my bet tonight, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Maybe maybe we'll see it in, in this matchup. I haven't I mean, seen anyone eat a shoe yet. No, like in your life? I don't or? think... Uh, like, not really. Like, I mean, I used to mention that I, I used to have this I'm... running bet, I'd do that as well, but... Didn't do it. No. Chickened out. No. I'm probably gonna never lost the bet. You know, make, only make oh, yeah, safe yeah, yeah. bets. Not a betting man, really. Yeah. Well, okay. See, oh, I would. I mean, like, see, I would play that one. See, I would be really sneaky and get like a chocolate shoe, be like, ha ha, <laughs> eating my shoe. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, do you know where I can buy a chocolate shoe? You said Admiral. my shoe though, so like, my well, chocolate. I mean, if I, I mean, buy it, it's yeah, mine. my chocolate yeah, shoe. It's still true. mine. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> like but but but, but someone buy him a shoe, it doesn't count. <laughs> Seriously, do you guys, or even anyone on Twitch chat, like, well, anyone, does anyone know where I can get a chocolate shoe? Because I'm losing this bet. He's know, not playing like, Diva, and... I don't know, like, go to the chocolate store somewhere. The chocolate know. store. That well, would make sense. Here you go, top analysis yeah, here Yeah, that would the make sense. Circles. Candy Am, man, I, wrong? You know, Am like... I wrong in any way though? I mean, that's probably my best shot. But getting get back real. on track though, in regards to, I guess, you know, the Apudo playing Tracer versus Enzo and nah, this is something I sort of brought up in the weeks before that when Apudo, I don't know why they sort of do that there, you know, putting Apudo on the Tracer just always sort of seems to fall short for them. Because they want Enzo and on the Pharah, this is almost the Zonda problem from Flash Rules where you just want, you want Zonda to play everything. On Fireball, you want Apudo to play everything because Apudo probably has a better Pharah than Incinerai as well. I, I, I'm kind of just putting that out there. I don't know that for a fact, but observationally, that's what it looks like. And whatever the DPS is, you just want Apudo on there, except for Tracer, where I do actually think Incinerai has been a bit more impactful on Tracer than Apudo has. But not having Apudo on Genji for so far, and you, you've seen what he can do on Genji, you see how much work he does on Genji, not having him there really hurts Fireball, so they're at this sort of stage where they have to have Rocket on a Winston, and they more or less have to have a Pudo on a Genji, and if they don't have those two on those particular heroes, that's when you see Fireball fall off. I mean, it's one thing to sort of note as well, Ninth has sort of been, I guess, you know, that X factor for them, always sort of playing, you know, the best sort of showing I felt they had on control was when they did pick up the Zarya. I think it was a little bit of misplay, you know, on that ultimate usage coming out from them, but if they did manage to sort of take that fight to them a little bit earlier, I think that would have been 
what they were looking for there. And I think the Widowmaker pick really did surprise um, the likes of uh, Detonator on that. Yeah, I don't know. I st I'm still not 100% on the Widowmaker. I'm not 100% on any of the sort of wacky picks. And the big reason for that is there are things you can do on the other team to really play around. I think Detonator did do a good job. They, um, they, they pressured ninth with Winston a lot. They even sent Doddle off there with the with. Oh with yeah, the when came they little... did a lot of work to actually push off ninth on the Widowmaker. But he and just gets one kill, and that's it's it's open. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the other thing is they're they're putting they're playing the angles where you need to do one or two things. You need to either not play Widowmaker's angles, or you need to be aggressive enough that you're pressuring Widowmaker and that she can't she can't play her own angles anyway. In any situation where you're out in the open and you've not pressured the Widowmaker, that's when a Widowmaker team composition is actually gonna work against you. So for both teams running like wacky side picks, they shouldn't, like realistically, they shouldn't work as well as they do, but you almost feel like it's because the other team didn't do a great job of countering it. But yeah, let's talk about that, right? Look at the difference on first point King's Row defense, like forget time bank, right, for, for now. The first point defense was uh, utilized very differently. When Fireball were defending, like you've been saying quite a lot, they didn't recognize, hey, look, that's a sombra composition. They're going to wait until they've got EMP and they're just going to come in and destroy us. So what we need to do is go and deny them that, go pressure them, go get our position. We're going to be the initiators on the fight. We're deciding when to go. And Fireball didn't do that. Now, like you were just saying, when Fireball were on uh, attack and they were running the Widowmaker, Detonator say, oh, well, look, there's a Widowmaker. What, what are we going to do? Let's go harass him. Let's go get our Winston on top of him. Let's, let's, I mean, let's even throw Zenyatta at him. Let's just get him uncomfortable. And while eventually they still lost that point, they did a better job than Fireball did. I feel like this matchup is sort of like the battle of the wackiness. I mean, not only this just on, on composition. I just... Okay, what's go, up, what's yeah, up? Go, so go, I just go, had to have a like, yeah. make him uncomfortable. I'm, I'm there picturing ninth being like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish, I wish there wasn't a Winston here, yeah, man. I just can't find the right groove in my seat. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I got that image. Yeah, like before the match, go and sneak like an extra cushion in. Maybe a couple, so like, like, what's, a couple of tacks on? underneath his oh, chair, you know? That's that's a bit. That's no, a bit no, 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 not like spiky ones. Just like you know, like underneath the seat, you know. Pluto's getting comfortable. What's going on there? What is that right there? Playing the bongo drums, indeed. Oh my! Now that's the hand, that's the that's, 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 that's the hand flex. I tell you what, like from someone who's actually hurt his hand from like playing too much FPS, yeah. like that's one hundred and ten percent. Like warm the hands up, get it, get yourself ready. I don't know about the flippy floppy though. That's a bit. It's it's definitely unique, but like that's also that's a, that's, that's getting ready for Genji. I feel that's also a sign that they've got a like a pretty good training regimen, right? Like that they, they are they've got all the little things down where they are doing these wacky hand movements where they're like. Let's get warmed up, and like it looks looks kind of silly to someone who doesn't know what that is. But like, oh, I would say it looks pretty cool, man. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, lo it looks. I'm cool. gonna do that next time I play. See if yeah. it makes me play better. See if you can get up to Grandmaster, doing some hand. hand See if I can get ranked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can do it. I believe you. We'll just get Kevin to carry you. Uh, Come on, Avril. Yeah. So season one, though, boys. That's um, all we. That's so what it is gonna about. be Hanamura. Yep. And that was Detonator's, Detonator's pick. pick. Taking it home. Home team going back home. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, <laughs> they haven't actually, I say they haven't done so well in Hunter Mora, but realistically against pretty much everything, they just haven't done well in general, so yeah. that's kind of a moot point. But so far against Fireball, you were saying this could go the full series, to, all the way to a full best of five, the, the fifth game, and I, I gotta say, well, I mean, at a minimum, we're gonna go to four, and I do think these teams are close enough that we are gonna get to that number five, I, but Detonator, over those two maps, even though Fireball won King's Row, I think Detonator are just pulling out ahead, just enough for me. And the big difference still is in those ultless fights. Detonator can just pull a fight one out, regardless of ultimate advantage. This is not consistent, but every now and then, if they can just do that, then they will get ahead in situations where they shouldn't be. I totally and agree with you there, and I just think the one thing that just yeah, I'll let, I'll, I'll let you go. I'll, I'm gonna let you finish. I believe you. I'm gonna let you finish. But the game that started, so uh, sorry. The one, no, no, just really quickly though. This no, is no, where Detonator fine. fall off. Do you know what I mean? This is where this is what we talked about. Like, the longer it goes on, the weaker they get. I feel. You, you know, I was going to say, you're like, what? Fall off the map? Because there are there are a few. Well, environmental they could fall off the map. Yeah. They could actually fall off the map. Oh, we are getting underway though. 
Oh, Amakin Hog on the offense. And I mean, we've seen this work out before. This is something I think uh, me and you had to talk about, you know, that can really sort of open up some of these pushes here if they do manage to get that hit right. from behind the Reinhardt shield. So important thing to notice here, Fireball not playing Reinhardt, not too unexpected. They are playing counter dive. They need to actually counter dive. They have to initiate. If they play complacent again, it's going to be an issue. Oh, wow. No one really contesting NZ Nar just yet, though. So letting him do a decent amount of damage up here on the high ground does have a Diva to protect him as well. But the positioning coming out from Detonator, very good. Uh, I think they should jump. just run straight into the point and just start putting cap time on that and force NZ Nar off this high ground. But they are sticking around just a little bit too long, I feel, uh, on the outside point here. You could be right. They might actually be going directly for the point. They already lose Zelf. Five already lose Zelfix, which is kind of going to be... It's going to be a little bit problematic for them. And eventually, Enzinar will have to pop off if they let him play the cat, which is what they're doing now. Well, Enzinar did manage to find that kill, so Amakin going to be taken out there. And I mean, Hog, big damage that they were looking for, but getting themselves a couple of kills up here on the point. So Hate getting very aggressive as well, going to be right up on the front lines. As I say that, he runs backwards, so not exactly what, what they were looking for. Now they're just going to be teaming up all over... Uh, all over ninth there on the point, managing this to force him back there as well. This, this is, is going to be really detonator. And it's not like Fireball don't have members to contest, it's just taking a long time to get in. But they've given a lot of ultimate here, and this is going to be the uh, Nano Visor coming in now from the uh, Sai Hate. A lot of bit of blocking coming in from ninth, but it's going to be absolutely pounded right now as the rest of detonator are there to back him up, finding a lot of mileage out of that one. And this is definitely going to be detonator's cap. And now all these Fireball players drop down. Good momentum to work with here on the side of detonator, but not many ultimates, only an Earth Shatter in the bank. And Still, it's Fireball. Oh, they change off it. What did they? They had, they had like 90% on the Earth Shatter, and then Samurai D just switched to Winston. So they go full dive. Oh, well, that does. And Amakin goes on to Amakin goes on to Sombra. So any and any momentum they had is now going to be lost. But they're going to go for setups again. They like to play the setups. Didn't have a real setup type of team. Go for the big one. One massive death push is Didn't have play style right here. Um, but I was going to say, Fireball have still so far not been able to show the initiative to fix their fights. Every single fight has been on Detonator's initiative. Detonator always picked the fights and Fireball just had to respond. Fireball can't continue playing like that. Not when they're running a counter dive. Any shape or form of counter dive, they need to make the, they need to make the move first. I think Detonator have been playing these positions quite well here. It's interesting to see. I think Enzina has now finally just got himself up on the high ground, so that's going to be very important to note there. If he does manage to remain uncontested up there, I think he is on the opposite balcony as well, so he could be uh, the thorn in the side of oh, Detonator. But look this at this, setting the up mode. for the EMP. Nice positioning there. Finally gets caught out here, though. Going to be a Pudo wall over him. Going to be jumping straight back up to the rest of the team, looking to reset up again. Smart play from Detonator there to not overcommit into that one, but a Pudo. Just as good play there as well, being extremely uh, aggressive and managing to catch that one wow. out before it comes through. Positioning from Benetto is fantastic currently. EMP coming down as well, it's going to be good, but they have to survive the self-destruct from both sides. It's just going to be Amakin falling down there as well. Now Dodoloff managing to pick that kill up on the rocket, but look at Saihati's position now. Shouldn't be contested up here. Sound barrier though to keep the side of Fireball alive, but the attack visor just going to work here. But Apudo's there to find him up on the balcony there. Should be able to find Dodoloff, and indeed he does as well. Ninth can be keeping this one alive here. Doesn't have a mech, but he doesn't need it because he's got a pistol and a dream. And now the nano boost as well actually onto Apudo. So maybe a little bit of an overcommitment there coming up from the side of Fireball. Ends in just managing to pick up the last uh, Diva kill there. So I mean, good stuff from Fireball to stabilize off the back of that. Uh, Detonator still, I, I don't think Detonator got the EMP timing that they really wanted. Still, Fireball aren't really picking the fights either, so eventually Detonator are going to get the fight that they're looking for. Eventually they are going to get the perfect EMP play, except if Fireball can actually make moves to either A, spread themselves out to start with, and B, as well as spread themselves out, actually pick the fight before Detonator can. Well, Detonator managed to get themselves control of that high ground there. Amakin trying to escape with his life. Should be able to do so here, get the hack. It's revealed, maybe. actually. Wow. Oh, my goodness. He is in a spot of bother right now. Can he escape with his life? No, he can't. Apudo, looking for that kill, manages to find it there. Saihate up in the back lines here, managing to fall back to the rest of his team. Detonator need to pull out of this one and pull out fast. Where have I heard that before? Anyway, it's going to be Detonator <laughs> now. With the five ultimates already set up, you've got Saihate as well really coming up quite quickly with his. And like I said, Detonator's plan here as the setup type of play, they need to go for the one big death push. Their entire, their entire game plan revolves around getting the perfect offense on a setup play. 
Well, they're looking as well. They lost so hard there before Tag Visor can come up. That's uh, that's got to be a good shutdown. Yeah, good stuff there from NZ. Now, now just on the point, doesn't even matter that he's on that EMP. Manages to find two as well. Now Akudo just looking to clean up the rest of these detonator players. They shouldn't really commit any ultimates here. Is that Nano Boost as well is going to be on Akudo? Uh, Hack coming through onto him as well, and it just uh, will not be what detonator were looking for there. Losing that soldier very early into that fight. Still managed to keep themselves a couple of ultimates there. But I guess a little bit of an overcommitment coming from some of these ultimate uses from the side of Detonator. And now this is going to be hard. They're going to have to look to build up all of them again. Yep. But Fireball have nothing in the tank. So I think maybe if Detonator were to go now, get a lot of mileage out of maybe that tactical visor, that could be the opening that they're looking for. Yeah, they've completely swapped off the Sombra now. Uh, they've realized they, they, they had their perfect push and they didn't execute it. Or at least Fireball played the counter, made the counter plays correctly. So... Detonator they're recognizing they're not gonna they're either not gonna have time to go for another death push or they just don't wanna do it. They should just go back to what has been working, which has been regardless of ults, they can pick up kills. And oh Sai Hate no. here, they should be able to win! Well Sai Hate managing to stay alive through that I one, that would have been be a it. huge pick right now. Down. Yeah, and indeed they have the position as well, so Sahate can pick any balcony he wants now. Does have that tactical visor to work with. No nano boost though, it's going to be Yoshi just throwing out that uh, self-destruct there on the point. If he can find something with this, they are managing to get themselves just a little bit of time there. Ninth though, going to be the one just holding it down on the point. And there's still 0% cap. Didn't they need to get at least one tick off this? If they don't get a single tick off this, it's going to be really disappointing because they opened up so well. I mean, that sound barrier as well now on Fireball are going to be keeping a lot of these players alive through this one. Apudo and NZNA are going to be able to do a lot of work as well. NZNA is such a great positioning there. Yoshi will find him though. So this might be, again, a little bit of an opening for Detonator, but not when all these frontline members are going down. Still 0% on the cap. Minute 30 left to go and still absolutely nothing here on point two. Fireball are doing an absolutely great job here at holding down point number two. And you've got to remember as well, this is Detonator's pick. And the other thing for Fireball is... When it comes to Sombra, even if Fireball is still, still not forgiving them for fight for not really taking initiative, but if you're not going to take initiative, at least a big, at least one way to counterplay Sombra is to spread your members out. And on a, on a defense like Hanamura, as you can actually see here, they got members all over the show. You got two members on the left side, high ground, two on the right side, high ground, and EMP is never going to be effective. So for Detonator, they wasted a lot of time. Oh, this is going to be now Fireball choosing their moment at a Pluto. Well, he got one, but he also got shut down quite quickly. And it wasn't even a very big kill there as well. It was De La V, didn't even have the sound barrier up to work with. So this could be, again, for Detonator, something that uh, they can work with here. It's going to be Amakin able to find that kill onto Rocket. Now they're just trying to get Saihate set up again on this high ground. They do have the nano boost to work with as well. They actually are just going to fall back here and wait for the uh, rest of the team just to get back into this one. 30 seconds with a 0% cap. I'm not expecting them to get a full cap out here. I would like to at least just see a tick, maybe two ticks if they can get a bit of momentum, but can't see it successfully happening. They would have to shut down the nano visor to start with, and then their own nano visor would have to absolutely clean up. And if ninth is on point, Ninth, is, ninth should be able to shut down Sai Hate. That's going to be key for Fireball's defense. Well, they've done it once before already with NZ now shutting down that tech visor. Sai Hate going to be using his first air as the boost as well. Straight into Matrix. And look at that Matrix job, all mate. over it there. Good job, mate, indeed. And now Sai Hate instantly pressured out there. Great counterplay now coming up from the side of Fireball. Amakin up in the back lines trying to find any kind of opening he can. Has the Dragon Blade here looking to find himself in Zidna. He manages to catch him, but Apudo and ninth up in the front lines is doing so much damage to the side of Detonator. And it's just even trades left and right. They still are sitting on 0% though. Over too time, many Fireball members alive. They Far need to find many. something that self destruct doing a little bit. But now Apudo answers with the blade. And this is the hope of Fireball slicing and oh. dicing all through the no, side of Detonator. And this is going to be it. Fireball holding down on point number two. Detonator with a sh grand, huge, massive amount of 0%. Woo. And, Am and Amakin for the second time in the row. Can I deflect the Dragon Blade? The answer is no, you cannot. <laughs> well, it's like me and Smite the other weekend when I was saying you could block out the uh, the Reinhardt Hammer. You know, maybe he listened to me and was like, maybe you can, maybe you can block I a think Dragon Smite Blade. Should've, I think Smite should have bet on Ninth because Ninth ended up being the one blocking out Ultimates with the Matrix tonight. That's been working out quite well. Well, for him. can I also just take us back in time at the start of this map here when I said that, um, you know, Detonator, they like, yep. They start. This hand movement, this is. Oh, this is the can get out of my way. <laughs> this is Dragon Blade practice. This is how I Dragon Blade like. Just left, like that. right, left, right, <laughs> left, right. But this is what I was sort of saying: is that Detonator, they just don't have the endurance. It seems like. I mean, they might get a point one hold here. I'm not taking that away from them. I mean, De La V's hog is pretty damn good. 
but this is sort of the, the case that seems to happen night in, night out, night out when we see detonator play, you know, start strong, pick up map number one, go King's Row, look quite strong, you know, but slowly get themselves edged out there and then now, can't even get a single percentage there, but I mean, Fireball played that defense immaculately. So just one thing I want to touch on with the 0% that we're going to be talking about is that this is a new patch. So uh, while uh, Detonator did cap a little bit of the point, you have to actually cap at least 33% of the point for it to go into what we've been used to on the live service, right? So all Fireball need to do on the second point, if they make it there, is cap out to 33%. Now that's yeah. still, still a little bit considerable for the second point of Hanamura, but still very doable. I mean, looking at sort of how they held their defense there as well, they definitely have, I guess, maybe a deeper understanding of, I guess, you know, that inner, inner, inner sort of workings of, you know, the angles they can take there. So I feel we're going to see a lot more split up play from them. I don't think that they're going to be relying on sort of a big death ball to push up, you know, get control of the high ground. They'll probably get control of the high ground then reposition, but we're right underway here and ninth going back onto the Widowmaker. They love these. The Torbjorn. The Torbjorn meta. What do we, how do we feel about this? No. It's not going to be working too well as NZNR finds it. So far, yeah, I think it. NZNR is just going to take the turret pretty easily here, but there, Kyolos goes down as well. It's 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 good initial picks out of Fireball, and interestingly enough, nothing from Knight. It's all just picks out of everyone else except Knight, and Knight is going to die without really contributing anything. But Apudo, look at him, he's absolutely woken up. Those hand stretches definitely doing work here. He's a solo up on the point now, should fall back ever so slightly here, right into the uh, loving arms of his Lucio right there to keep him uh, sustained through this one. Picking up a kill there as well, Zalfik's going to be helping him out as well. And this is all fireball right now, this should be their cap. Let's see who okay. on the side of Detonator can keep it alive, nobody. So here's the important thing, Apudo's on 82%. If they roll through with a nice Dragon Blade really quickly, they're not going to be able to build up any other ultimates, and that's okay. Rocket might get a Primal Rage, not going to help them out that much realistically. The Dragon Blade, this is going to be King's Row at that final moment, in time back, all over again. It's all going to be up to Apudo. If he gets a lot out of this Dragon Blade, this could be the win outright. 33%, you can absolutely get that. Hamakin got himself a little bit of charge there. Samurai D, they're finding that kill onto Rocket, so that's quite disastrous now for the side of Fireball. They should be able to, they should just fall back oh, right now. Happening. But they are actually committing into this fight now. Apudo dropping, ninth dropping. It's going to be Zelfix getting taken down as well, onto the point. And stabilization, Stab stabilization? I was going to say, if you can fall out as Fireball, you, you should do that now, but uh, no, they all got caught. Six players down means three ultimates, actually coming up to about four ultimates with Detonator. And Fireball, they had one shot, they had one shot, one, one opportunity, blade, one opportunity, and they, mo they totally mom spaghetti that one. <laughs> I'm glad you caught that one. I'm glad you caught that one there. But now Detonator though, they are, um, you know, ahead on the ultimates here as well. So. Very easy now for them to sort of set up on this defense. A lot to work with here. Apudo, the Dragon Blade in the Dream, as we've sort of oh, talked yeah. about here. But the Primal Rage is going to be keeping um, the Winston easily alive through this one. And Amakin getting the better Dragon Blade here, it seems. Triple kill for him there. And this needs to be Fireball falling back again. Yeah, well, see, this is, this is actually a really good fight for Fireball. I was actually going to say, if, if you're a detonator, you don't want to ult first, you want to ult second. You want to just play, uh, you want to just play the fight out. Wait for Fireball to commit, and because you have more ultimates, you're, you're, you're likely to win regardless. So, you ulting second means you draw ultimates out of Fireball, which means they don't have this chance to actually just build up. And Fireball are gonna go walk in now with a pretty decent advantage themselves, and for a team that only needs to get 33% to get one tick, this is Fireball's plan, and they can execute that. Well, as I mentioned sort of before, you see the main brunt of the attack going up the right side there. Apudo over on the left just to clean out any sort of uh, lone wolves. It's going to be Amakin just blocking him out over there. And Apudo does get taken down there. Manages to get, they managed to find that kill onto Amakin. So big DPS uh, player taken down a piece there. But now Isn't he's in uh, still clutch it. good control of the high ground here. And he does have a lot of support with him. Oh, tactical visor now oh, coming Straight in. into Matrix again though. All over that one. So they're getting pushed off the edge here it seems. That doesn't even just eats the fist rocket, just blasting off there, just taking him down. Team Rocket taking off again. And now NZNR, you're just the meme supreme today. NZNR just going to work up on the high ground here. Pluto with the Dragon Blade picking up a double there as well. Self-destruct doesn't find anything there, but they are managing to get themselves 
some cap time. No, they're not. That, well, that, that nano visor unintentionally just fired into a matrix. And I mean, look at this. They are managing to find the kills yet again here. This is surely when they're going to get themselves some cap time. Sound barrier coming out from De La V to keep these last couple of players alive on the point. Still big contest here coming out uh, from the side of Deadnade. And now counter Dragon Blade. Can he find enough of it? It's going to be Kurlos. Ends it now running for his life. The May is out as well. What is going on here? Still not managing to find anything here on the point. This is Contest City. And the problem was they didn't kill Amakin. They Inzinar spent a decent amount of time just on De La V. Samurai G's Primal Rage realistically is what kept them in for so long. Without the Primal Rage, I expect the cap would have actually gone over and taken that would have been the entire game. Amakin's clutch Dragon Blade right at the end there was the nail in the coffin for Fireball's push. And Fireball had that one push where they were significantly hit. Three minutes and 20 is still a decent amount of time to work with, but it's going to take at least another minute and another couple of pushes with until they're back in the same position where they can go for a game-winning fight. Well, it's going to be... Or they can be detonated from Lee Jung Tower and just go in and win out of nowhere. And just left click everybody, and I mean, they're hoping to do so right now. Pressure up onto the high ground. Ends now almost getting bursted down through that one. Amakin does find that kill onto Kurlos, though. And there's, and Zalphus as well, so support's here down for the side of Fireball. Pudo is close to follow as well after that one. Amakin making very short work here of uh, the side of Fireball now, and he's got another Dragon Blade up again. It's going to be another fight with Fireball, just do a full wipe. Feed a bunch of ults to Detonator, and for Detonator... It's, it's, it's okay as long as Detonator are using ults when Fireball isn't. And then Fireball can build themselves up to a position where they're very likely to win. A um, couple of things they got to draw out here is Primal Rage is absolutely going to block them out as the primary as the primary stall option for Detonator, so Detonator have to play the Primal Rage really carefully here. Oh, look at that, and Amakin's position manages to catch Apudo out as he tries oh, to creep his way up. in there, and Amakin's not worried at all. Boost on him as well with the Blade out, managing to do a lot of damage straight into the face of the side of Fireball. He barely gets a kill, in fact he doesn't get a single kill, he just gets a mech. So I mean a lot of damage is given out there as well, so support should be able to build a lot of ultimate off the back of that one. Just going to be hunting down ninth over here on the D.Va. But Detonator do manage to stabilize off, uh, off this one here. Yeah, well... I think Fireball also kind of happy for Detonator to just throw a couple more ults out. This is, this is again, this is calculated play from Fireball. Bleed out Detonator, bleed out all the resources that they have, and now you're going to come in with a big advantage. I said it was going to take at least one. It took them a minute and a half and a little bit extra as well. But six ultimates against two. Mind you, the Primal Rage is going to be the big problem for Fireball. Fireball have to be able to ration out a decent amount of ultimates where they commit enough to get the Primal Rage out, and then they have a couple ultimates left to secure the actual cap. Oh, Enzina uh, has a decent amount of positioning here up on the high ground again. I like they did a nano boost there. That's good because they can save it for Enzina. Oh, well, self-destruct came in there. Let's see if his tactical visor does okay. anything. Not at all with so hard. They managed to get that kill onto him there. Does have the Diva just eating that one up as well. Yoshiharu's Diva, though, going to be left quite alone on the point now. Self-destruct, not going to be uh, not going to be needed at all. Oh, and fireball, simply fireball, holds fireball. it. Fireball with six ultimates. Apuro gets the opening kill. Inzinar's tag visor gets fairly annihilated by, by uh, is that Samurai D? It is. And Samurai D didn't even have the primal rage here, so the biggest stall tool for Detonator, Fireball didn't even get that out. They so didn't even get rid of the oh, primal rage. This is so good, though. Now they've managed to find their early kill onto Apudo, so he's been taken down out of this one. They managed to pick Rocket up as well, so I mean, don't have, that, don't have to worry about the Primal Rage right now, but they are rethinking their strategy, waiting for the rest of these uh, teammates to get themselves in here. So giving Detonator just a little bit of time to work with, gonna be uh, NZ now getting himself around the side. No, he's not. This is gonna be Sai Hade just sitting there. This is out a full-on flip, and with six ultimates on Detonator and 10 seconds to go, and still 0%. Like, they got, a, they got a few percent in there, but unless you get the one tick, it doesn't matter. This could just be a draw. Oh, Nano Blade coming in there uh, from Amakin, taking down Kurlos early into the fight. Okay, but a that's double a works. Big, a double works. That's big indeed now. And now Amakin on the point, looking to do uh, as much as he can here for the side of Deadnet to keep them alive, three members down. But the rest of Fireball are just dropping here. No one even on the point, as I say. That's going to be Rocket to come blasting in and then blasting out as he gets taken down almost instantly there. Dragon Blade on a Pudo. Nothing he can do there. We're going into overtime. Into, into, look, at, look at that. My hand would be in look my face that. too. Look at that. My Not happy. My hand would absolutely be in my own face oh, yeah. no, that's, no, I don't... I don't was that Kurlos? I think that might have been Kurlos. I mean, he gets taken uh, down a lot. Thing, uh, Pruto had a bit of a Eugene no KO uh, moment as well, where like you drag a blade, you just instantly die, which is kind of unfortunate. So Fireball, 
they had the fight, two fights they had where they were considered game winning fights for them. The first one was earlier on, roughly at the maybe like the three minute 20 ish kind of mark. Uh, the one that got realistically saved out by Amic and Dragon Blading in the final moments. The second fight, a little bit more inexcusable because it was six ultimates from Fireball. That was just mis executed. I mean, cool, they got the Dragon Blade out early, got the initial pick. Fantastic start. Saved the Nano Visor. Got the tag visor out on Enzinar, didn't commit the didn't commit the nano boost, which in that situation ended up being okay because Enzinar just died instantly anyway. But you also got to think like, what if the nano boost was there and the 50% damage re reduction might have just been enough to keep him alive with the healing as well? So kind of a misplay there as well. They had all the right pieces, and then it's like they just made a couple of wrong moves and it cost them everything. And then they never had another opportunity where they could actually come back. So for all the setup, this is the same mistake that. Um, detonated did in a very kind of different way both teams spent minutes one two minutes maybe two and a half minutes getting the perfect setup and saying look we got the ultimates we got the setup this is going to be the play and they go in there and they blow it and then they don't have time for another setup well we'll see who obviously can come up with the play now i think we go to that tiebreaker control map so i think is, that this yeah, is, is where single point single mm -hmm. cap well, not a single cap, but a single mat of control. So just Imagine one if it was a single cap. I think, I think Imagine if it was a single cap. <laughs> Detonator would Detonator get it. No. Yeah. I think this is where Detonator are just going to be... Detonator you know, pull out a Sombra, and then Fireball is just like, mm. <laughs> What do we do? We'll, we'll just hide behind the point. We'll hide in our spawn room and then wait for the EMP, right? That's... It no, seems no, to group, be... up, group up together as well. Yeah, group up together yeah. as well. Okay, no, in their defense though, Fireball, when they were defending <laughs> against the Sombra in Hanamura, yeah. like like Avril was saying, it, it seems like something changed. They were spreading out, and well, that's a great that's way to That's the thing is, it. on that versus King's Row, where you have a lot less option. So King's Row, if you're going to spread out, where you're going to spread out is you're going to put, put DPSs in a, in, in a flexible tank on around the clock tower, around those back sections, hiding behind walls, and then the rest of the members are going to be on the floor roughly behind the point. So King's Row, where you can throw them a bonus saying like, oh, there's not there's not a super amount of, of places to, flare, uh, to, to really spread out anyway. Hanamura second checkpoint though, you got the whole huge point to play with, multiple levels of elevation, um, just a large open space anyway. I think it was just risky for Detonator to want to play Sombra to start with. I mean, you play Sombra, you're very unlikely to get a full EMP. Let's not forget as well, they sacrificed any momentum they had to swap up to that composition. They put their heart and soul into believing in this composition, and while it had some promise in one of the fights, it just took way too long to set up, and you even saw they actually ended up abandoning it, putting uh, Amakin back onto Roadhog instead, and it still didn't end up working Yeah, well like they that. executed, they hit the, they hit the EMP, but like I said, they couldn't, they couldn't hit everybody. And the people they didn't hit, I think one of them might have been a Poodle with a Dragon Blade. He immediately counter-ulted, and that was all they needed. They, they got the counter trades in, and that's it. Well, so for the tiebreaker, we are going to be going into Ilios. Obviously, golden point here. It isn't just the first cap that wins. It is the person that obviously uh, wins out the map. Whoever here. wins actually wins. Yeah. Whoever wins is the winner and gets more kills. No, no. Strangely <laughs> enough. Ironically. Well, you get more kills after you win or before? No, 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 no. You know, like, it's one of those things. You get the one who gets more kills, you win. Based on kills, you win. Not actually. Which, like, you'd think would be enough to actually win you the game, but so much of the game is actually translating kills into objectives, which for, De for Fireball, I, I think, hasn't really been happening. And Yeah, I mean, they're getting the kills right now, but can they get themselves the cap? We'll find out in two seconds. And indeed, the cap is about to unlock here, and it is going to be falling quick, into Fireball's good. favor here. They will get themselves the first cap, and they've won. No, they haven't won the game yet. <laughs> <laughs> so they do have control right now. I think that this is where, obviously, uh, Detonata will be able to answer back now. Yoshiharu in quite a good position, does have a little bit of support to work with here. But Fireball being aware of where he's trying to get to, and it's obviously the man himself, Apudo. Nice reflect there as well. So Apudo putting good uh, pressure onto Yoshiharu, not letting him get set up too well. Saihate as well up here, not being able to do too much work as he's instantly pressured out here by the enemy Tracer as well on the Detonator side. So this is this is Detonator trying to secure high positioning for Yoshiharu. They, de they take down a Poodle, which means they need to turn on the gas now. They need to actually convert a 6v5 into a 6v4 and then get a recap. We're already at 35% and it's going to be ultimates committed by Fireball. So I think Detonator actually losing advantage. Yeah, and they are uh, actually dropping right now, but 
kills. It's not being found just yet. It is going to be Fireball to pick up that first one. There's that self-destruct. Buys them time. And a kill onto De La V as well. Going to be a, uh, a Pudo just cleaning up one more as well. And Fireball still in control of the point here. Detonator need to answer this one and answer this one quick because Fireball on 55% here. Rocket in a good position as well. Yeah, it's this kind of situation where you got the kill onto a Pudo. That's the, the main DPS. Not even just the main DPS, but... He's a Pudo. He's the star of the entire team. You got him down. 6v5. If Detonator, what, what do they do with it? They actually didn't turn that into a 6v4. They didn't convert that into further kills and they couldn't turn it into an objective. And now it's going to be double dragon plays. And so far, I think a Pudo's come out on top of these. And he definitely has managed to pick up, uh, I'd say, a little bit more than his counterpart of Amakin there. Now, Amakin on the point does have a tracer by his side. Let's see if they can manage to uh, find, them, find themselves some kills there. So, hardly finding a mech. And a Winston as well. So, I mean, is it enough though? No, it will not be, as Apudo will take him down as well. Apudo has absolutely woken up here. 93% now transcendent straight onto the point. I feel that was not needed. A little bit too keen. Mm. Definitely a little bit too keen being there as he just uh, transcendences onto the point with no damage being taken and no teammates around him there. Apudo going to make Donald off pay for that one. And now it is going to be a kill uh, in the side of Detonator here, but Fireball should be all oh, over this yep, one. Okay, hello. Ooh. That happened. Double false bomb kill from Sayate. Might just turn things around. There's not a lot of players there for Fireball. Still a Dragon Blade coming online for Apudo though. I wonder if he'll use it to play and make the hero play. And indeed he does. He is managing to slash his way through that one, taking down Yoshiharu there on the point, but Saihate is not giving up this one just yet. But Apudo is going to find some ninja stars to the face. Fireball pick up Ilios, and map number two leading the series two to one. Still a pretty tight series, except Ilios there where... Well, this is that's Fireball's jam, man. Yeah, it is. I, I, haven't, I still haven't figured out who actually gets to pick the, uh, the tiebreaker. Maybe it's random, but... I didn't. I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy the soldier play from um, from Detonator, just because it's too. You 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 almost know you're going up against dive because it's fireball. When how are they not going to play dive? They are they are just going to do it, and you're going to play for not as much setup as summer, but essentially some sort of setup again where you have to put your soldier on a on, on a good position where he's not going to get contested which against Dive is incredibly hard to do, which means, you know, they were looking for that upper balcony kind of position overlooking the cap itself. They spent so long trying to do that. They finally get the kill onto Impudo, and they kind of just squandered it. Yeah, I mean, That's also, where they really lost it to me. Look at the positioning when they're setting up there. I mean, yes, it's usually a great idea to have multiple teammates up there with your soldier. Make sure he's not just going to get dived and killed. But who have you got up there? You've got a Lucio, a Zenyatta. That's Genji's playground right there. That's his jam. He can just get up there and get multiple value kills jam out of it, tonight, right? I've, I've noticed. Jam sandwiches. Exactly right, yeah. What a jam. You know, like, like, jam. Just, just whatever you like. You know, it's, it's your Vegemite sandwich up there. Whatever you like, you know. And we saw Apudo in the play of the game, in fact, actually just getting up there and he says, well, hello there. Everyone's just packed up neatly in this house right for my dra Dragon Blade. And he got those kills. And that also was in the last fight that was realistically the best chance for uh, Detonator to come back in because as we saw on their final fight, they were rushing for the point. They were literally Shouldn't using have trans Transcendence. Yeah, big, big Transcendence to straight I don't think that was point. needed, but like you can tell that was from desperation to get onto the point it's as soon as possible. Too desperate. You didn't need to do that because they weren't even in overtime yet. Was, yeah, was you, didn't, you right? didn't even hit the overtime. You weren't actually... It was still ticking up. They, they got, regardless of Transcendence, they reached the cap before it reached overtime. So they were always going to get that. They just, they just, they did, they panicked. You're right, they absolutely got desperate. Um, and Donaloff just died straight afterwards, so that transcendence could have been super useful for actually contesting the cap, and they just got completely written yeah, off. Because they I got mean, so just... close with the double pulse bomb there, because I'd already already written that one off, being like, okay, no, this is done here. This is done here, and then Sahate was like, no, let me just stop this one right now, and just throws the pulse for bomb For a moment. Like, yeah, just, just for a let moment Let me momentarily there. stop this. You know, they managed to hold on to that transcendence for just a little bit longer. I mean, that could have been the, t the whole turn of the tide there in the entire fight. I mean, yeah, I mean, as everyone was saying, like, uh, Dodoloff died straight after that Transcendence. So let's think about this, like, later on during the fight. Not only would the Transcendence have helped his team stay alive during the fight, does everything a Transcendence should do, but also makes him invincible. He would have not died where he, you know, back in this, in this timeline, he actually did. He actually did die but straight in the after. other multiverse, <laughs> yeah. he absolutely died. Yeah. In the other the multiverse, back, Detonator are undefeated. When, 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 when Detonator <laughs> take the time machine back and they say, all right, look, all we need is just this one different team fight. This lets us win the entire tournament somehow. And they go back to this point in time.
Thought a lot of his transcendence absolutely could have been the thing that changed that fight. Like you said, you know, double kill with Pulse Bomb. Your transcendence keeping the team alive, keeping Dottle off, especially alive, super alive, being invincible. Super alive, super, super alive. alive. <laughs> <laughs> Better than being alive. <laughs> You're not, you're not just regular alive, you're super alive, right? You're invincible. So that could have been the absolute thing that swung that fight their favor. And I mean, it was still from 0%, but it could have been a different story. Could have been a different timeline. And for a team that did so well in control anyway, didn't it? Like three and O on Lee Jung, they looked fantastic on control. They absolutely... They're uh, just sprinters though, I swear. They just, uh, they're just sprinters. They're like, is it 100 meters? We've got this. <laughs> 200 meters? But, but, I mean, 400 okay. meters, oh, so, <laughs> oh no, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> so, but I mean, you're talking about tournament fatigue and like how a big, long best of five series can affect you. Let's also look at the look at the reactions of the players on their faces from Fireball after that Hanamura draw. They this is Rupuro's like, reaction. They, yeah, well, Rupuro, yeah. But <laughs> the, the others, right, they... Not so much of this, but a little bit more of this, right? Where they're like, What's that, tears? Yeah, tears. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> I was like, okay. just confirming. To, I, was to, like, yeah, I thought it was yeah. like, maybe you had a sweaty face. You're like... I mean, okay, sweat's probably involved too, right? Because I relate. Looking, I can relate. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, looking, they're looking emotional, right? And that's after a draw. And yeah, sure, it's a draw on a map where really you should have won. Only 33% of the map? Sure, you should have actually been able to take that. But they're looking emotional after a draw. So you can talk about Detonator and how, sure, they might not be able to run the whole race. But Fireball... I'm looking... about to get emotional if Dinner don't pick up a win here. <laughs> I'm about to get emotional if I see players looking like that again. It you're just, about to, get, emo my, you're about to get emotional if Yoshiharu doesn't eat an ult. I know, That's I know, but at least we're going to game five where... It, well, hopefully game five, where there's the most chance oh, of it happening. Well, we're going to find out though, because Fireball picking Dorado is something we don't this usually see. Is the second see. Dorado of the whole tournament? Yeah, we don't usually get to see this the This might Dorado. be the second Dorado of the it's whole tournament. It's also the second best soundtrack in the game. The it's first. the best. No, okay, look, we've had this it's argument before. Hollywood's the best. Hollywood's the best. I feel like a hero. <laughs> I like feeling like a hero. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I bet Pudo's feeling a bit like a hero now. And yeah. so he should. He's, he, in all, re all respects, is pretty much the hero of his team. And uh, I was going to say every time when you need to count on him, you can. That would be a lie, but... <laughs> Most of the times when you count oh, him, you want to count him. Most of the times when you want to count on him, you absolutely oh. can, and that's been fantastic. And how can you look, not he's love all, that guy? He's all smiles now, which is fantastic to see because, again, so much of the weight of his team, he has been kind of carrying. Even when what I do like is even when Apuda was down, Fireball seems to seem to try and maintain their place in the game. They live long again, enough main, for but, but, but then again, main, mainly that's because Detonator just kind of sat there and be like, let's kill a Pudo and then wait for him to respawn. <laughs> they're they just kind of like... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> took, took a lot of effort to kill that guy. Whoa, we're so tired after Lee Shang, boys. Whew. <laughs> Look, this I mean, is what I sort of talked about earlier about how, you know... <laughs> how long's the marathon again? <laughs> we're going to play five maps? <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> you mean we don't how win the tournament after Lee Tower? This how many weeks happened? is the tournament? <laughs> All right, we'll save it to the end, boys. We'll save no, it for the day. No one, we'll no one tell the Detonator day. how long this tournament is. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they're like, you've got more games this weekend, they're like, what do you mean? And, and really? no, one, no one tell Fireball how much money's on the line. <laughs> Otherwise, why? why? Well, because they why might get even get more emotional after even draws, right, where they should be winning. Oh, I mean, like, going into... Go <laughs> come on. All right. I, I, maybe, maybe that's why they're emotional. Bit of a stretch, but I'll give it that. <laughs> sure. Look, come on. Okay. Come on. I, you guys have your marathon meme. I can, <laughs> I can meme too. Come on. <laughs> I'm dying right now. I'm dying right now. <laughs> trying, trying, to so Fibre, trying to compose. So Fireball obviously in the lead. And it's match point. And it's also their map pick. So positionally, great great chance for uh, Fireball to actually be able to get this one out. But I, I, I want to believe we can go the full distance because you said earlier on, you can definitely see a best of five, a, a full five map series coming out. I can see a full five map series as well because King's Row, that was a, no, so not King's Row. Well, yeah, actually King's Row, King's Row as well could have gone either way. Hanamura literally went to a draw. And the fact that Fireball ahead did come down to a single map of Ilios, which you kind of favor Fireball anyway, because it is their map. They're super practiced on it. Also, Detonator came out with a composition that was going to be weak to what Fireball were doing. Also, they didn't take advantage of, uh, of Apuda dying. So, you know, Fireball, Detonator just really made a bunch of mistakes let's, there. Sorry, on a map that was favored for Fireball anyway. Yeah, let's also talk about how on King's Row, Fireball actually got to the third checkpoint, right? It wasn't through superior teamwork and actually <laughs> winning a team fight. All the great You assets. mean the regular way you would do it as a professional Exactly, team? right. They literally snuck 
a tracer onto the payload at the end of the checkpoint and got it, right? So that could have been a completely different story, and that's on the payload section, which brings us relevance to another payload map on oh, Dorado. Good segue, good and segue. Fireball, Boom. also a Sneaky team... Sneaky segue. Also a team locked into that Winston composition. They really suffer when they have to swap off of it. So Detonator have all the options. They can run any team composition they want. They, um, they can run a Sombra if they really want to. Oh, we've right. seen well, that one before. Thank you very much, Matt. Sneaky segue, Ross, as we get into Dorado. And it will, of course, be Detonator on the attack. Fireball defending first with a counter dive. And I said this before, but if you're going to run a counter dive, I want to see the dive. The dive portion of the counter dive is actually kind of important. Well, I mean, you know Apudo is going to be getting in there, that's for sure. As Rocket gets this one frisky, jumping straight in and then straight out of this one. Now Samurai D pouncing, but he pays right there. Knight sitting up on the high ground. Great play there. And that is what they were looking for to open this one up. Amakin, though, trying to find something. is going to be forced back with the rest of his team here. And now uh, Pudo looking in a good position here as well. I think we're going to see a little repeat of that on this next offense coming up from Fireball. Oh, I mean, uh, ninth, is, ninth picking up the first. This is actually a very oh, kind of of rocket, aggressive. Though. This is actually a super aggressive defense. So I, I'm kind of liking it because this gives Fireball a decent opportunity to actually fulfill Support their compositional down. goal. And Amakin is not going to get into that. 1v4, not today. Yeah, I mean, there's being uh, fashionably late and then there's being completely late right there. Well, he went for it. And either he went for it. <laughs> what? Either he went for it or or Fiber were just like, hey, that's a kill. I mean, yeah, he's just sneaking his way back into the house and uh, Biotic Grenade uh, finds its way there. Gets, some, gets itself this kill. And I mean, the setup coming up from Fireball, you can sort of see why they're not sorted. You can definitely see okay, why they've picked this okay. up. Okay, quickly though, big, some, a couple of change ups for Detonator. Amakin now onto the. Amakin onto the McCree. You got uh, Samurai D now onto the Reinhardt. Has he been on Reinhardt the whole time? I have no idea. Uh, I think he I did, did it once on him. No, I think he started on Winston, I'm pretty sure. So they, oh, haven't, yeah. managed, they haven't managed to get past, realistically, the first corner. And I don't expect Fireball to give it to them easily as well, particularly not if they're already setting ultimates. And a Dragon Blade. went out, it completely missed. I think it's going to be Apudo's turn any moment. He is looking just to uh, wait for that opportune moment there. I feel like he should go from the high ground just for those swag points there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but they are managing do to I? get themselves no. up. I'm sure you do, mate. And there we go, gets himself right in there. Doesn't even hit the Dragon Blade what? yet. I'm not too sure what that was from Apudo. How is he getting himself alive? No, no, he manages to pay the price and get taken down there. But Knight sitting up on the high ground here with that attack visor, still no one to contest him, and they've got nothing really there. It's um, going to be just Yoshihara. <laughs> what is right. happening right now? This is just an absolute mess, but indeed it's sort of working out uh, for the way of uh, Fireball. They're managing to hold this one down, just throwing things. I'm, I'm trying to make sense of this because Fireball commit ults, they don't pick up the kills, but Detonator also don't get the counter trades back, so neither team's really doing it. I don't know. Well, Nano, Nano Visor coming in right now. now this should Fireball finally do They're some work here. Yeah. Now Fireball are picking some kills up. And this is what I was talking about just before, you know, um, when we were in that in-between breaks there. This is like the battle of the wacky races, you know what, what I'm saying? Who can sort what of I, do the, the, the least try. craziness out of these two crazy teams? What I enjoyed was Yoshiharu hanging out at the bottom and just looking at ninth and just saying, man, I wish I, I wish I could just fly up there in Matrix, but I can't because everything's on cooldown. Oh, Amakin though, hitting the dead eye, finding that kill onto Rocket, starting things off hot here. And now Dinnetta starting to get a little that bit of movement on the cart. That what was a snipe. That was a snipe. That was a total snipe. Yeah, see you later, Zalfix. I mean, not feeling, uh, not feeling uh, Zen, Zen Yada here. Do you believe it's 36 Ooh. seconds remaining? Unfortunately, I don't think Fireball are going to be able to get it here in time. Could it see, could see some golden magic from uh, from a Pluto's Dragon play, but I don't know. I don't want to bank on that right now because the card is in such a great position. You've got a lot of momentum for Dead You've got ultimates as well. Even though it's 20 seconds, a Pluto wants to make oh, the hero There's play. the blade. Ninth is with okay. him as well. Well. Elf. It is going to be Amakin though, finding that kill onto Apudo, but still ends in Nar there. Managing to keep himself alive, manages to take down his counterpart of Saihate. Nanoboost coming in on Amakin though, is not going to be finding too much more. But that nice flashbang, Five can't seconds. find the kills! Rocket's there to clean it up, nice as well! And Fireball, managing to stabilize, don't even let Detonator get the first cap here. So now, let's see what Detonator can do on their defense. Is it going to be brick wall or oh, paper? Oh man. Paper. See... Apudo came in with the Dragon Blade. Uh, it was like half expected, half half like... You half think, oh, this is too risky, and half like, yeah, it's Apudo, he can totally do it. See, we went in there, got us killed, got flashbang killed by Amakin. That's the expected result. The expected result is Apudo went in for the hero play, and you shut him down because your team is positioned well. 
you're on the cut, you got the momentum, you got the earth shatter, everything's in your favour. Oh yeah, and then into the Nair and Knights just sort of roll up as well and clean up everything else. And you gotta you gotta sit there for a moment and think. So with all the ultimates that Detonator had and all the all the everything that was going right for them, huh? Bit of, tunnel, bit of tunnel vision again, I feel, what? coming out from How did you lose that? <laughs> How did you lose? It's it's kind of Detonator's thing, though, sometimes. Uh, I mean, usually, usually I see that... <laughs> a, little, a little bit of that, but also, we usually see them... The, their best moments are when they win fights. That they shouldn't, if you look at the resources, they're behind an ultimate, or maybe they're behind a positioning, or even they're just desperate for time. Sometimes those are the magical fights that they do win. But when they're ahead, sometimes just something slips out. Like, they've got all these ultimates, they're literally parked on top of the payload, and then Apuro just comes in and kills them. And yeah, I, I just... Uh, uh, as much as it's great that Fireball are taking out these fights, I almost feel like they're being rewarded for things that are super risky and in like most other situations you shouldn't be able to get away with it. stuff you shouldn't be able to get away with fireball are getting away with and like they're not just they're not just getting away with it they're robbing detonator of all their gold and just laughing to the bank right now yeah, this it's, is just it's just wacky races really mate like i can't really understand what is going on i mean this is probably going to be a little bit more of a um structured piece of offense coming out from fireball here sort of uh that is a lot oh. quicker that is a lot quicker from fireball and amakin's going to try his best to delay but unfortunately the rest of his team got entirely assaulted on the side anyway and i mean there we go again ends it now when he goes on that pharaoh we've talked about it before gets taken out right there but ninth though oh, should be able to find this, this kill or is it lucio that no was it's not way too close oh de la v almost managing to find that kill that would have been absolutely huge there so now fireball having a little bit of room to work with here one support down on the side of dead but it's just going to be uh, Sai Hate managing to pick up ninth up in the back lines. They're now pressure up on the high ground. Fudo needs to get in here and help, and indeed he is here to save the day. Oh. Look at this now, Fireball cleaning up the Detonator from players. Apudo is great. I mean, he is the uh, the man, the myth, the legend, and now these Detonator players looking a little bit split up here. Apudo managing to bait. Um, Samurai D into the rest of his team there. Can they pick the kill up though? That's the real question. But look at the card distance. We've only just started the game. Uh, I shouldn't even be surprised, but Fireball, this is the expected card listen. This is where the card's meant to be this far into the game. The fact that it took so long to even get it there to start with was a problem in and of itself. So regardless of Fireball's result of this current fight, card's in such a good position that uh, you got to think they got enough time to get it out. Oh, and I think they just kind of went right here. And yeah, the Dragon Blade coming in now from Apudo doesn't even need to oh, find this kill. Oh, oh, but it doesn't matter. Amakin getting absolutely blown off the map there. And now... Fireball looking extremely good. That transcendence just going to be uh, used for just the uh, just for again, flavor, just for the, just for just for style points as yeah. well there. A style transcendence. Yeah, you know, just look at me. Look how golden I am. Look how golden this win's about to be as Apudo slicing that. I one think home. they need to get the win first before they can do anything like that. And unfortunately for Fireball. Detonator aren't giving this one up. Oh, no, they're not. And that's the Dragon Blade now coming in. Will he find anything with it, though? It doesn't look like it, as Kurlos is going to be the one to take him down there. Now, Saihate, all hopes are on him here. 99%. Oh, can't even get man. that tech visor. Gets taken out. Cart still not moving yet. Yoshiharu just rushing in, but they're just trickling back onto the point barrage. Boom! There it goes. And this has got to be Fireball's moment right now. But still, Detonator not wanting to give anything away. Just charging back to the point. But there it is. And that's going to be Fireball picking up the series here. Three to one. Turning it round after Detonator just get a little bit too tired. There were so many games there where it looked ridiculously close and even quite lopsided. Now, Li Zhang absolutely okay. detonated his game. Look at that. That's the mark of a gamer right there. You know he's a real gamer when he can't play with his watch on. If you ever see anyone playing with their watch on, it's a lie. They're not, they're not a real gamer. You're not a real gamer unless you play without your watch well, I don't even own a watch, so what does that say? I think uh, that real game is about as real as you get. Well, because, you know, if, you, if you're a real gamer, but you can just look in the corner of your screen. You know, old tab, look in the corner of the screen. You don't need no watch. It's true. It's true. Are you, are you going to alt tab in the middle of the game? Wait, when, you, when you're dead. <laughs> when you're dead, so a real gamer will be dead and he can check yeah, the well, Yeah, every, everyone dies, you know, if, if, if there's a game in this entire tournament where someone goes un... Like, I mean, it, this is just Overwatch, for example. If someone goes without a death, I'll eat a shoe. I mean, I think Blank's done it a few times. Have they? No way, someone... Surely, without surely. a death. Yeah, without a death. I, I, like, maybe on a mm. round, like on defense, but... 
Maybe not. Yeah, the I, I can. Like, yeah, no. You actually, yeah, no. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe take maybe, that shoe off. Maybe, maybe take it off. No, 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 not on, not on. A, so I'm so <laughs> on a full map or like on an entire 100 yeah. percent completed map with both sides have a chance to take in defense. I think that might be a bit. Uh, yeah, a sure, bit surely big... you know, like your your Lucio or your Zenyatta dies, and you're like, bro, what's the time? Can you check it for me real quick? Like. <laughs> But that is definitely okay. uh, so, so surprise, uh, not surprising, but... So yeah, a case in point again, detonator, early leads, very difficult to close, not just... So what I like is that they're able to close individual games out, or at least get very close, but closing a full series, a little bit beyond their scope currently. Well, I mean, this is the first time, short of the match against Sun Sister, they've taken a map off anyone, I believe. Nah, uh, they got blank two times. That was, that was uh, two times within Oasis, so True. Not, not a full map, right? True. And this time they... Yeah, yeah, you're right. This time they did actually look pretty good. Uh, they, uh, you know, Lee Jung Tower, 3-0. and o, Very one-sided matches, except maybe one of them, I think it was Night Market, and that was the first one. Well, King's Row, they should have won. Yeah. I, I'm going to yes. go on a limb and say, I think Detonator just played King's Row better, and I think Fireball, without the sneaky back cat, without some... I was, Black. I would say kind of throws from Detonator on their time bank defense. Detonator should have had that. So uh, that should have been a 2-0 lead to start things off with. Now when we go into Hanamura, draw. both teams both teams kind of let it drop there. And that could have still been either, te either team's game. And I think there was a real possibility for, for, for Detonator to win that again. So this could have still realistically have gone to a 3-0 and for Detonator. Uh, and Ilios, that one cap of Ilios, that one round of Ilios was realistically and what well, well, literally what won fireball the game and i think without it didn't that have still looked a little bit better on on hanamura to me and it, when we finally got the dorado that now that was kind of one side of the fight <laughs> yeah. I, I, got no, I don't have a lot to give the detonator there that's just kind of like nah. i remember that could have been uh evening it up to two and two right that if king's row or hanamura had have gone differently right and then we would have had the map five then we would have had the map five and a chance of Yoshi eating a Graviton Surge, but... <laughs> Feels bad, man. So, 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 okay, so the problem is, Yoshi barely played D.Va, and Ninth barely played Zaya. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> yeah, that was the main problem. I mean, it, it, I saw Ninth come out with Zaya, and I'm like, yes! But I mean, like, happen, but then there was no D.Va, so... We've sort of talked about, you know, retrospect, uh, you know, being obviously the best form of vision there is, but I mean, looking... Well, hindsight. Uh, hindsight, you know, sort of all of these things here, but coming into map number three, that I think that when they took that... Hindsight's tour, more accurate than Tech Visor. Well, I mean, it, it hits every defensive matrix. Thing. I was going to say, if that went to any other control map other than Ilios, might have been different. Might have been completely different as well. I think when it went yes Ilios, no. I'll, say, I'll, going, I'll mm. say yes and no. Mm. I'll say yes and no because even though it was Ilios, Detonator they still threw away moments where they, they should have been ahead and did silly things like let's transcendence when we when we don't even need this to, to, to overtime. Okay. Uh, let's. Let's play a really slow composition against a dive on a control that's very open. Anyway, like you're not playing, you're not playing Lee Jung control center. I just don't think that composition is ever gonna. If it does work, it takes too long to set up. It takes too long for you to get yourself in a situation where it's gonna be super, super effective to start with. And even when you got the early kill, didn't act on it. So detonator. I don't think they have anyone but themselves to blame for that map or not. Look, it already was Fireball's map. It already was. A map that was going to be in their favor. On top of that, you just can't be making those kind of mistakes. Well, Dinetta dropping the ball just a little bit there, and Fireball are going to be picking up that map three to one. We'll just take a quick <coughs> look at the standings now to see how the rest of these teams obviously uh, stack up in the uh, total standings now. Fireball slowly making their way up the uh, oh. up the list now, four and six. So uh, almost Marchi. almost catching up to Fireball. Fireball are catching up to Fireball. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Fireball catching up to themselves a bit. But they're almost catching up to Machi, mind mind you. Um. It's not, it's, I still feel like, when I look at these standings, if you're going to put these into tiers, it feels like blank currently in a tier of their own. We'll and see, then you've we'll got, see. And then you've got a five, you've got this two to, two to six AHQ to Machi feels like its own little thing currently where everyone's fighting themselves to secure a top three. And then Fireball down to Sun Sister kind of feel like their own little tier where Fireborn now trying to break past and compete with Machi again, who, by the way, have looked pretty spectacular the last weekend. I mean, they beat Flash Wolves. That's the biggest story of the weekend last week, right? Uh, Machi pulling that out of nowhere. Now, we still haven't seen 
Archie play anyone significant apart from Flash Wolves in this second round. The, the other three maps, that the other three teams that they've played, have been both the Japanese teams, sitting right, as you can see, at the bottom of the table. Now, the big match is going to be Marchi against literally any other team right now. Which so, is happening this weekend. Exactly, right? Um, Marchi playing uh, blank tomorrow, so, I mean, that's going to be... Yep. Marchi also play AHQ on the weekend at some point as well, so Marchi's real test starts this weekend. And, but, I mean, like, they've really taken leaps and bounds. You know, before we start talking, obviously, about our next match up there, you know, Obviously, this is sort of the Marchi, the Marchi bandwagon, I guess, a little bit. You know, they've Welcome made to the Marchi train. Pleasure to have you here. Can I please see your boarding pass? No, you don't need one. It's right here for free. But they've made leaps and bounds, you know, in regards to um, how much better they've gotten, how much tighter they've looked, and obviously taking down um, Flash Wolves, who, in my opinion, secondly look t technically look like the second strongest team. You know, that's going to be a very interesting thing to sort of look for. But I mean, next up, we obviously have um, AHQ taking on uh, Blank Esports Club. You know. And the undefeated Blank Esports sitting on Is it a club now, is it? Is it? Is it? Blank Esports Club, you reckon? Can I say that? Can I join? Can I say that? How do you get a, how do you get club membership? Yeah, could you invite us, please, Ethan? Um, <coughs> I mean, you, you, seem, you seem to have created the club. Did I, did I really just say that? You literally said did Blank I, I'm Esports actually club. mad. I'm actually a mad dog. <laughs> to be fair, it's an AHQ Esports Club, so it probably just yeah, got maybe mixed I'm up. Yeah, I'm just a little it bit happens. confused there. I mean, maybe it's because we've been out here for so long. So after that, a uh, little bit of a mix-up on my part. We're I, think, get... I think there is still going to be a winner's interview, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, Fireball going to get on stage, hopefully, in not too long. Oh, yeah, long. we find out, uh, well, obviously, how they're feeling there with that one. Um, I can't believe, I, even in my own mind, I didn't say that just then. I'm actually, I'm, I'm crazy. That's okay. I... I thought I thought the tracer backdoor play was from both Japanese teams, so don't <laughs> don't feel too bad about it. I was rushing it out because it was in between maps. So I was giving you guys a bit of room, but then I rushed it out, said it, and then immediately recognized. Wait, it's other like, teams are allowed to do this except Japanese and no, outside no, no. of Japan? Like, it's, it's almost like saying the payload's just moving so fast when it's actually. Just <laughs> it was at that point. I was like, oh my god, they're gonna just do it straight now. Okay, now it stopped. <laughs> okay, no. There's a there's a little bit of a disconnect. I, I think with my brain and my voice today. That's okay. Maybe like, it's every day. I don't know. I think that's definitely going to be a point that's going to be brought up, though, is is the back cap because it was pretty integral. I I, I can't I almost want to say it was the thing that really pushed Fireball over the line, and you, we kind of you can kind of talk to death about it, but I I have a feeling Fireball would not have been nearly as successful if at all without the back cap. So kind of expecting, or at least I, I'd hope for that to be kind of brought up in the interview because I want to hear Fireball's thoughts on the back cap and you know. Uh, essentially, I think they're just going to end up saying we're just really glad it happened. And I guess, you know, if we're just like beating, you know, points that we've already used and we're just talking about them over and over again, that whole sort of, you know, detonator starting off very strong, coming and then not sort of being able to close out the series there. Is it an issue of their player's skill or is it really just um, they don't have the endurance? Find out right here. After the interview. Say hi to everyone. What do you have home? Um, have you guys ever played uh, three uh, against three offense, uh, one tank and two support style? Um, เคยเจอครับเคยเจอบ่อยครับเพราะว่าได้ซ้อมในสกรีนมาหลายครั้งนี้ก็มีการเตรียมตัวพอสมควรครับ uh, he said we have encountered three DPS come uh, multiple times and we have prepared some of the strategy for it. Okay. Uh, um, on the second map, uh, you chose uh, Diva. Uh, what, was it difficult or like, how, how was it? อ่าไม่ได้ครับคือเราเราซ้อมมาด้วยด้วยชุดดีว่าครับเราเลยไม่ไม่กล้าที่จะเปลี่ยนเป็นสามดีเอสมากกว่ามั่นใจในชุดด
Have you ever uh, practiced uh, with three offense style? Kind of? ก็เคยครับเคยคนเรียกว่าเต็มเต็มวันก็เกือบสัปดาห์ได้ประมาณนี้ครับ He said we have practiced uh, many times and yeah uh, last week the previous week <laughs> 所以呃上礼拜我们有练习过非常多次嗯了解那对于台湾还习惯吗呃、uh, How do you feel about Taiwan so far Taiwan uh, very good <laughs> So many women, so good. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. 再次呢，恭喜 Fireball 赢得这次的比赛。Thank you, thank you. Well, there we have it from Team Fireball. I mean, a lot of that, I guess, was you know just the talking about the triple DPS. You know, they didn't really even really bring up the back cap. So. Well, what was what I found was interesting was like, so uh, did you find any? Was there any difficulty in picking the diva? And like, my, the, the response in my head was like. Well, really, what I did was I moused over the diva and I clicked it. So <laughs> it's like, what else could that actually mean? Like, was like was, 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 did you have a very big decision-making process in picking the diva, um, or was it hard to pick it? Ooh, it was pretty, pretty easy, I reckon. Well, I mean, easy. fitting it into a team composition is a thing yeah. that yeah. is probably what the question was about. On a right? serious like, note. On a serious <laughs> note. That's what they were actually yeah. talking about. That's no, no fun allowed, guys. Stop laughing. Well, we've heard it there from Team Fireball. After the break, it's going to be AHQ Esports Club coming up against Blank Esports. We'll see you after the break. So, as you know, when Mickey was in BizCon, Mickey was going to be NVS, because the NVS was going to be back. เออขอลองงานมิกกี้หน่อยอย่างเงี้ยมิกกี้ก็เลยบินไปที่เกาหลีนะไปแข่งเอเป็กซีซั่นหนึ่งถูกไหมครับหลังจากนั้นผมก็เลยถามมิกกี้ว่าอ่ะก่อนก่อนที่มิกกี้จะบินไปนะถามมิกกี้ว่ามิกกี้มีใครที่ไว้ใจได้ไหมแล้วจะมากลบอ่าหรือว่ามาพัฒนาทีมเราได้ไหมมิกกี้ก็เลยเสนอชื่ออ่าพี่เก้านายทีเมานะครับเพราะว่าอ่าเขามีประสบการณ์ในเอพีเอสค่อนข้างสูงแล้วก็อ่าเป็นอินเกมดีเดอร์ที่ค่อนข้างดีประสบการณ์เยอะด้วยแล้วเรายังต้องเอาไก่ KOKFC ออกด้วยเราก็เลยต้องหาผู้เล่นเพิ่มอีกคนนึงซึ่งเราก็ไม่รู้จะไปเอาไอ้นี่เราก็เลยทำโปรเซสเดิมคือถามมิกกี้ไอ้ถามพี่ก้าครับว่าผู้เล่นคนที่6เนี่ยคนเป็นใครอะไรเงี้ยแต่ตอนแรกก็เป็นบาสทีทวัตก่อนแล้วอยู่ดีบาสทีทวัตเนี่ยก็ก็เลิกเลิกเล่นโอวัตไปแล้วเราก็เลยต้องหาผู้เล่นคนที่7ซึ่งก็ได้ล็อกเก็ตมาซึ่งเป็นเพื่อนของพี่ก้าวนายทีเฮดครับผมก็คือมีประสบการณ์กันในเอพีเอสค่อนข้างเยอะเยอะค่อนข้างเยอะเช่นกันแล้วก็ได้มาประมาณนี้ครับแต่ว่าในอนาคตอาจจะมีการเปลี่ยนแปลงผู้เล่นอีกถ้าเกิดทีมมันยังไม่ลงตัวครับผม Okay so um, basically what he says that um, the reason why Mickey left left us uh, because uh, the team called Envy us they want to try out Mickey so we we decided okay you can go and, and try out and then Um, at the same time, Okuto asked Miki, who do you think we should replace you? And Miki recommended 9th. Then after that, for a while, um, we have also have another member left the team called um, Ko KFC. After he left, uh, he, uh, Okuto also used the same process and asked 9th who should we replace, who, who will be a good, you know, the next one to replace Ko KFC. And 9th um, recommended uh, Rocket. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. 他说，呃，一开始 Miki 离开的时候，啊，不好意思，有点长了。呃，一开始 Miki 离开，呃，因因因因为有另外一个战队想要尝试 Miki， 哦，所以，呃，呃，他们就觉得也 OK， 那就让 Miki 去试试看。那 Miki 去了 ，Mi Miki 去的同时呢 ，Fireball 也是问他们说，呃，就是问 Miki 说 ，Miki 你有没有什么推荐的人选？你觉得不错，可以来取代。来来来，增加到新增到我们的队员里面。那呃 ，Miki 那时候就就是推荐了呃，就是 Nike H。然后之后呃 ，Nike 呃之后 Nike H 呃也是在推荐了 Rocket。对，就是其实他们就是一个一个这这样增加新的人这样子进来。等于是先有推荐人，然后一个带一个。那么第二个问题，我觉得我我问一个比较轻松的问题啊，就是呃，其实我们会发现就是在比赛当中呃，有一些低迷的气氛。
是很严肃的，比如说快要输掉了，然后压力会很大，然后就会六个人就降在那。可是我们在 Fireball 上面好像没有看到这种感觉，就他们会比较欢乐，然后他们会无论输或赢，他们都是用很好的一个态度面对他们的一个比赛。那呃，我想呃，请你帮我问他们一下，就是说他们是怎么保持这样的一个心态 ？OK， 嗯、um, ，So sometimes uh the discussion is uh more relaxing. Okay, so um, sometimes when um, the team, the, the game becomes uh, very like serious, and uh, sometimes uh, players get depressed. But uh, it looks like Fireball, you guys are always relaxed, always uh, very easy, and you know, e uh, easy to go and stuff. Um, how how do you guys keep that mood um, on the on the on the stage? ก็คําถามก็ประมาณว่าเขาถามเขาถามเราประมาณว่าแบบแบบทำไมเราถึงดูแบบไม่เครียดเลยเวลาหลังจากที่เราเราแพ้หนึ่งเกมหนึ่งแมปหรืออะไรเงี้ยครับเราคือหนึ่งเลยผมเป็นคนที่มีแนวคิดที่ว่าการแพ้มันไม่ได้แปลว่าเราล้มเหลวครับแต่มันเป็นความหมายที่ว่าเราต้องพัฒนาตัวเองต่อไปแล้วก็เรากําลังเจอคนที่เก่งกว่าเราเรียนรู้อะไรจากเขาได้บ้างคือเราอย่าไปเราอย่าไปจมกับความพ่ายแพ้ครับเราเราเล่นเพื่อให้ได้เรียนรู้มากขึ้นมากขึ้นว่าเราควรแก้ไขตรงไหนอะไรเงี้ยครับแล้วก็การที่ทําการที่เราเล่นด้วยอ่าเขาเรียกบรรยากาศที่มันเครียดอะครับมันจะทําให้เราเล่นได้ไม่ค่อนข้างดีเราก็เลยรู้สึกว่าเราต้องคีบบรรยากาศให้มันแบบล่าเริงแล้วก็สนุกกับเกมให้ได้มากที่สุดนะครับแล้วการเล่นของเรามันก็จะดีเพราะว่าถ้าเรายิ่งกดดันตัวเองเราก็จะยิ่งเกรงนะครับแล้วเราก็จะเล่นได้ไม่ดีก็เลยเราก็เลยพยายามคุยกันคุยเล่นกันตลอดเวลาแต่ก็ให้อยู่ในเกมครับคือแบบมีการแบบคุยตลกกันบ้างนิดหน่อยอะไรประมาณนี้ครับโอเคอุปสรรคเสด็จ sometimes we we do uh, get stressed a lot but the reason why we always happy is because that if we get stressed and we will not play well so he will tell everyone to keep open minded and be happy at all the time and he will talk like they will tell joke while they in game or on a, on a break That you know we should do this and this blah blah blah. You know, just joking around. Just try to keep everybody happy. And yeah, just this this um, ways of doing stuff like this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, so, uh, 通常在比赛的时候，当然大家还是会呃心情非常低落，就是尤尤其是像输的时候什么的。那他呢会尽量呃，因为因为呃，如果心情不好，大家心情不好的话，一定会打不好。所以他就是会尽量让大家开心，可能会讲笑话，或者是可能会举一些例子，比如说在游戏内教大家做一些什么蠢事之类的，让让大家开心一点。对，那这是他的方式来保持大家开心。那我想延伸一个问题哦、喔，队上有没有比较严肃的队员？说他是欢乐的嘛？那我觉得他跟 c a o s 两个常常会在那边捏来捏去嘛。那我觉得他们两个应该是比较有趣的组合。队上有没有其他人？有哪一位队员他是比较严肃的？ Um, is there anyone on the team is more like serious type? Because uh, Obuto is, you know, the happy type of person, right? Uh, is is someone more serious on your team? Carlos, he is the most serious in the team. Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. <laughs> But you always, uh, um, you, uh, Obuto always like. Happy. On his face and stuff. Yeah, because I I I want to make make him happy, not not serious. When when he's serious, uh, the um the atmosphere is not good. That's why I I try to um make fun with him. Yeah. Carlos, 就是最他们对对上最最严肃的人。那他说，因为他有时候太严肃了，所以他会就是对他做一些恶搞，然后让他开心一点。好，那这边我们问一些比较轻松的一个话题哦，包含就是，呃，欧布托有没有女朋友啊？这第一个，第二个就是来台湾有没有比较喜欢吃的食物？然后在台湾这段时间，因为也大概三周了嘛，有没有觉得台湾有哪些地方是让他觉得比较有特色的？嗯、um, ，one， 呃、uh, ，we have some questions about Obuto as well. Uh, one, the、uh, first question is, uh, do you have a girlfriend? Okay, and second question is: Is there any type of any food you you like in Taiwan? 
Uh, and the third question is, uh, have you uh, visited anywhere in Taiwan that you really liked? อ๋อคําถามแรกครับมีแฟนแล้วหรือยังมีแล้วครับผมคําถามที่ 2 the first question uh, he have a girlfriend and he love her very much. <laughs> the second uh, the second one is uh, he like uh, noodle type of food and soup. And the third question is uh, he he haven't been um, anywhere much in Taiwan except for the night market and he cannot remember the name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 他說第一個問題的答案就是有他的女朋友而且他非常愛他。對,那第二個問題呢是呃第二個的回答是說 um, yes, 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 Fireball加上Obuto就是帶給我們最歡樂的一個組合